Howdy there, folks, and Tex of the Black Pants Legion here. This is Dwarf Fortress. I've played Dwarf Fortress since about 2008. Back in the day, it was all ASCII art. It still can be if you desire that interface. This is the premium version, which is on Steam, but for those of you without the coin or shekels to purchase such a thing, the standard version is still getting updates and has a number of tile sets and mods to where you can enjoy it just the same. And with those mods and tile sets, enjoy it in any which way you want. There's a lot of really good tile sets for Dwarf Fortress. And the soundtrack is typically uh, Simon Swear, who is a fantastic musician who sings a lot in Dwarvish, as does Mr. Goat, believe it or not. So... Here's what we're going to do. We're going to play us some Dwarf Fortress. <clears throat> Pardon the state of my voice. I uh, have been suffering for the last year from long COVID, which is like COVID, but it doesn't go away. And it sucks. One last thing before we get started here. Please know that I am not good at Dwarf Fortress. If you want to see someone who's good at Door Fortress. Krug Smash. Spelled with a K. That man is to Door Fortress as no one else is to Door Fortress. Krug Smash is wholesome as shit, positive, and very talented at storytelling. If you see Krug Smash's videos on anything, I recommend watching them in sequences. The stories that come out of his doings are, well, of the highest craftsdorf ship, shall we say. Alright, let's get this fucker started. I have a few active games, but I don't want you guys to have to watch me continue something without context. So let's create a new world. Large? Oh, by the way. <laughs> The premium version has the ability to, uh, well, use multi, multi cores and yeah, shit gets crazy. Now, if you want to build a world with lots of detail, my current world save idea is ficus, uh, which is an inside joke. Well, let's see, large region, large island. Yeah, you know what? We'll go back to that. Uh, okay, let's see, basic options, da da da. If you guys thought that Door Fortress took forever to uh, create a world, this new multi-core threading that they have as an options is insane. It's pretty quick. Well, for Door Fortress, that is. So in Door Fortress, for those of you who don't know, you'll see a name. That's the name in Dwarvish. And then you'll see the name here, which is the name translated to the common tongue. Gethsil, the past plains. Thunders of God in the belted desert. Wow, that sounds like a pulp novel. I know a lot of people who use Dwarf Fortress to do, uh, to create their own D&D &D settings or uh, adventures using the maps in this, which you can export. Um... One of the most common packs you can use for Dwarf Fortress for people just getting into it who want to get the free version, which is on the Bay 12 forums, is called Lazy Noob Pack. And it contains not only large parts of soundtrack and all sorts of fun enhancements, but allows you to actually export uh, your maps so you can check out the world. Seen people turn those map worlds into all sorts of beautiful things. Passing a few weeks to get things ready. Now, skip tutorial. I don't need no tutorial. People will say text room when you said you didn't want the tutorial. You'll say that in the comments once something's gone wrong. And it will. Serene surroundings uh, are fun. Surroundings have like a alignment. So there's... It's like a standard nine hex grid where there's like good to bad and serene to wild and chaotic 
So you can have stuff over here that's like sinister and terrifying and it's like a horror movie. It's like Evil Dead. Like Ed, you'll cut someone's hand off and it'll reanimate and come over and kill you. Then you have like serene stuff that's wild. So you have unicorns and you have to fight them. Which can be a son of a bitch. Because they have a knife in their forehead. Fucking unicorns. Alright, where are we going next? Yeah, see these terrifying surroundings? Don't want to go there. There's also goblins near there. Fuck goblins. Uh, let's see. What is this? The Goldenrod Dune. Actually, a desert could be pretty fun. And they announced a new uh, sequel to... Or the second part of the Dune thing, Villeneuve's Dune. There's a volcano, which uh, some I've done a lot of volcano starts. I like those. Kind of interested about um, Villeneuve's Dune. Not saying that I uh, think it's going to be the best or the worst or whatever. I enjoyed the first one. Um, my only critique was... The soundtrack at certain points was just a total miss for me. Because something epic would happen and rather than let it just hang there, you know, you had the the chorus of the lady just going, ah, and I'm like, why? You know what? A desert could be pretty fun. Problem with the desert is there are almost no trees. You have to make do with cigarro cactus and shit, but deserts can be pretty fun. They can be really challenging. Wintery biomes can be really fun because everything freezes solid and then you gotta really rush to get shit done. What is this? Oh, the obscene hill, the land of throwers. That's rough. Alright, let's see. The bearded jungles? That sounds pretty dwarfy. There's elves, humans, and goblins up here. That's neat. Elves are the worst. You can't trade them jack and shit and jack left town. All right, let's see. Ooh, ooh, look at that. The crazed land. There's a volcano right there in the middle. This this could be pretty good, you know? Now, you got goblins to the north. You got elves to the north. No humans to trade with. Potentially some dwarves to trade with. Problem is, there's elves. See, up here is all joyous wilds, which, duh. I'm going to have to figure out how a military works, and I haven't done that in a while. So you're going to see me bumble through shit trying to relearn Dwarf Fortress. I'm not great at Dwarf Fortress. I don't want anyone to think I'm great at Dwarf Fortress. Again, if you, if you want to see someone who knows what the fuck they're doing with Dwarf Fortress, Krug Smash again. Please go watch Krug Smash. Krug Smash is really good. See, this one I've got some humans downstream here, which is pretty neat. Uh, Casket Danced. That's the name of their little hamlet here. Oh, it's a few. Luck Dies? Casket Danced? Lunches Praised. Okay, that's a working class. You know, that's a working class town. We call this town Lunches Praised because we enjoy our lunch. Clinched plant? Is that like hand egg plant, the meme? Alright. Raptor buckle. Oh, that's a good name. Past rooms. Or passage rooms, either way. A lot of chuck tools, working class. Alright. You know what? I like this area over here. It speaks to me. The spines of honor. The forest of glazing. You know what, let's let's go with the headwaters here, right here. We got the headwaters and we got this beautiful little river here next to the mountains. And I think I will sit, oh wow. What? Oh. You have selected an area with a light aquifer. Selected a savage area. The wildlife may be very dangerous. You have selected an area near a necromancer's tower. He may be invaded very early by powerful foes. Where's the necromancer? I, I don't see... Ow! Ow! Just right up the road. Well, I guess I have to build a really good door. I don't care. Ford Hopper? Ford Hoof? Ford Name? Ford Rule? Ford Sugar? Ford Thrifty? Let's see. 
Dread Thrifty. Fuck yeah. The Wire of Gifts is the name of our group. All right, here we go. Let's go to war. Welcome to Zavud Kabat, Dread Thrifty. I have to be careful because if Goat watches any of this, he might write a song about it. He wrote a song about Cripple Bottoms. He did. All right, let's 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 take a look at the map here. <clears throat> Looks like the forest just ends. We have this big stony valley here. We've got a lot of fucking rocks, a.k.a. a mountain. Got a handsome stream in there, which is nice. Mudstone. Uh-huh. 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 Magnetite. Magnetite's good. Okay, what do we got? How deep is this brook? It is deep. Okay. Let's see. Tiger eye clusters and... Ah! Red sand. Excellent. There's the edge of the map. Red sand could prove very useful for at least the start of my fortress. But it looks like we have a red sand layer beneath this. So, I'm going to stay on one side of the river, and I'm not going to... What's the word? Tempt fate, because I'm not fucking dumb. Well, I'm dumb. I'm very dumb. All right, let's see. I'm going to smooth some of this uh, rocks in front of where I intend to build my door. There we go. So first things first, I'm used to all the... Uh, I keep reaching for the keyboard to use my shortcuts from the old version of the game. And I'm trying to remi remember that, hey, there's an option to actually use. Not that. And that is that is my mistake because I keep reaching for it. I'm a dumb dumb. Because I used to know just all the shortcuts. I could be like, oh yeah, well, let's go look at that, and then just key key, and it would it would be a bit much. So let's go and meet our dwarves. Let's see, miner, miner, woodworker, woodworker. You know, let's take a look. Ah, that shortcut still works, and it reminds me. Shut up. All right, let's see. Uh, done. I'm not gonna fuck with the river right now. Great way to die. If you ever want to find a list of your dwarves, you. That's the short key I use. So let's go see. We got a miner. Uh huh. All right. I finished up some work. Annoyed, caught in the rain, satisfied at work. Uh huh. All right. Let's look at their personality. Great affinity for language and iron. Wow. Okay. Imagine saying that at like a, a singles mingle, you know? What are you into? Oh, you know, uh, passion for languages. Oh, and iron. Oh. I guess that's normal for Dwarvish. Dread Thrifty. So I'm going to knock out some of the surface bits here around the thing. We're going to make this all happy. <clears throat> well, happy as we can. And I'm going to hope to clear out a basic starting area and find some soil uh, underground that I can use. Otherwise, I'm going to have to... Otherwise, I'm going to have to punch down to the caverns. Now, there are a lot of really interesting things about Dwarf Fortress you will not know, and that's fine. You're not supposed to know all the things. You're supposed to discover the things. This isn't like a modern game where there's a big culture of here's the shit you need to know, here's the top ten hacks or whatever else. This game has never really embraced that. This game really does embrace the older ways of the internet. Oh, something has collapsed on the surface. You mean like a tree? Fuck you, tree. Unless it fell on somebody. Watch your number of dwarves when you start, because sometimes that'll happen. You'll be like, ah, oh, yeah, we cut that tree down, ah, and then you'll have six dwarves instead of seven, and you're like, oh. Oh, fuck. But yeah, um, Dwarf Fortress is not a game that's really ever embraced. See, there, there I am using shortcuts on the keyboard again. It's never really embraced the idea 
of there being only one way to do something. Uh, Dwarf Fortress has embraced that there are multiple ways of doing things and that you should always be happy to explore the game at your own pace. If anything, Dwarf Fortress really reminds me of just old internet rules on stuff. Don't ruin things for people. Let people have their own, you know, playthrough. Let them navigate in their own time their understanding of the world. Don't force upon them your way of playing the game. Don't tell them how their fortress should be. Don't inform them that the fortress is best if X and Y. There's a lot of guides or stuff out there that will help you, certainly. But when it comes down to running your fort, your fort is your business. If you want to make a fort that harvests the bones of elves and uses it to make craft goods, by all means. I have. Fuck elves. So someone's going to ask what's this over here. And this is, this is going to be where I have my uh, garbage. Need to designate an area in which to throw your crap. And why did I make this all rounded off and weird? I don't know. Sometimes I just make happy little mandalas as I go along in Dwarf Fortress, you know? Sometimes I round things off rather than just do squares. Sometimes things aren't even symmetrical, which causes people, you know, great amounts of pain. Some people get very mad I do this. They're like, Tex, that's not symmetrical. Well, make your own fortress, buddy. All right, so we've got a nice river kind of running through the map, which is nice. I like it. Happy Fortress is happy. Well, not really. I mean, two two of them are eh. Four of them are ah. Uh, and one of them is ah. Uh, you know. But not, not more than that. They're measuring... Uh, they're measuring their, their smiles. And they're rationing them. But you can make whatever you want in Dwarf Fortress. I mean, I know a lot of people out there will try to build something grandiose their first time. Don't do that. You will tempt fate, you know? Instead, you must be like the dwarves themselves and be, you must be fond of your industrial industrious labors and you, you, must, you must seek a path of crafting and embrace your craft. Every fortress is going to be different. Every story is going to be different. This game does have some advantages over RimWorld. Uh, RimWorld does a lot of hard rain Jesus when it comes to things. The game will lurch and then it'll be like, you have been attacked by 1D100 corgis because of 1D100 reasons. And then you have to deal with it. It's just randy random no matter what. While that has its own charm and certainly when coupled with mods, um, offers a really unique, a, a truly very unique um, gameplay style. Mods especially. I mean, good God, modded RimWorld is a very, very fun game. This is something different altogether. And this game is complex and muddled and many other things that, you know, I'm not trying to say you must choose one or the other, but if I had one game to play forever... Oh my God, do you see that? Did you see that? Where is it? Where? Oh my God, what the fuck? I, I got startled. Others. Giant Ravens. Okay. Personality. Great ability to focus. Thoughts. Didn't feel anything. It's not so great. Alright, so giant animals have already startled me. When you see sprites that are much bigger, uh, be careful. Alright, so I've made my nice turnip-shaped, or maybe heart-shaped, I don't know. You know, uh, little carve-out here. It's kind of neat. Not exactly what I needed to do, and certainly not efficient, but it'll do. And if we get attacked by necromancers, this will be hilarious. Because I have no means by which to defend against necromancers, but, I mean, eh. 
All right, there we go. Accept. Let's see. Ah, uh, yes. Corpses. Yep, they go in there. And garbage. Yep, goes in there. Handled. Now, you can start however you want this game. Much like RimWorld's choose prepare carefully thing. You can, you can just have a whole bunch of guys, however you like. Looks like I have, let's see, cranberries, cabbages, radishes. I have a few things that I could start picking on the surface if I needed to. All right, I'm gonna have my stairs. I'm gonna go down like 10 Z levels, I think. There's a very good chance I could run into an aquifer and aquifers come in two categories. The light aquifers just kind of make the walls and floors leak, and if you're quick, you can shore those up and make it watertight, and you know, it's fine. The other kind you can. The other kind are heavy aquifers, where it's it's basically that movie The Abyss, you know, when the, when the habitat starts filling with the water. It, it's not good. Also good movie. Soundtrack, Alan Silvestri, same guy who did uh, Forrest Gump. Um, probably one of his better soundtracks as well. Fun facts with Tex. Seems like so far the dwarfs are happy. That's fine. I heard that sound. That's in game. And I don't like it. This is not good. All right. Uh-huh. See, we're carving stones. Let's see what we got. Mudstone. Uh-huh. Magnetite. Uh-huh. What else we got? Mudstone. Shale. Promising. Different stones are in different biomes, so you never know what you're going to run into. Green Jade. Uh-huh. What else? Shale. Tetrahedrite. Let's see. Shale. Mudstone. Uh-huh. Oh, Woodworker is fighting a raven. That's not good. Because that raven is probably giant. I'm not going to go and get involved in that, because that's probably going to result in our doom. It's probably already resulted in our doom. Okay, it looks like the uh there's a there's a pool of raven blood there. Oh my god, they killed it. Well, great. Now nature's against us. That's how it ends. That's usually how it begins. Somebody pisses off a bird, and then you end up having to fight all of them. Alright. Let us begin by doing a, something a little bit tricksy here. Aha. Uh -huh. See, there's the aquifer layer. So I've done what I need to do there. Actually, the aquifer could do us a favor, believe it or not. So we're going to use the aquifer to do us a little favor and help us start a farm. Possibly. Unless I flood this fortress out, in which case we'll start over again. Ah, uh, let's see. Stockpiles. This will be a finished goods stockpile, which is where we put a lot of our things things that we will be trading with all right we're going to put all of our finished goods in a nice pile here i know this is not efficient but don't worry i'm just trying to get my shit in from outside ignore the bloody bird all right here we go I'm going to go down to this aquifer, and I'm going to hope that it actually floods this layer. Because then there will be mud. And with mud, I can work. There we go. Let's see. The dwarves are doing their thing. Oh, I forgot. 
go into my labors and make sure my miners are only mining. That's kind of useful. Make sure your farmers are farming. Otherwise, they'll pick up other tasks. And that's not to say they shouldn't do those other tasks, like hauling and etc., etc. Um, in the Lazy Noob Pack, there is a essential tie-on called uh, Dwarf Therapist. I hear the wolves. I don't like this. You hear that? That's nature waiting to kill us. As soon as I have some muddy floor, um, as soon as I have some muddy floor here, I should be able to uh, begin very basic cultivating. Looks like the looks like the aquifer is only in a little part, and as you go through in layers, the uh, aquifer will be in different amounts. The aquifer is not just a flat layer. Well, in the heavy aquifer, it can be many flat layers, but the light aquifer tends to wind around, so you can find ways around it. Don't get intimidated. Don't let underground intimidate you. Well, it should later on, but let's not let's not get to that part yet. I don't need to crush your dreams. And you don't really need a large farm to make your fortress work. You don't. All right, this side will be... Yep, I got some ideas already. I got some ideas already. All right, let's start some industry. Uh, workshops, let's do, let us do, um, stone worker. And I'll put this here. And I'll have another stone worker here. And then you go into here and you're like, you know what? All of this can be stone. And then this side will be my carpenters. And that will be wood. So carpenters, and make sure I keep the building after placement, because then I can build multiple. And then we go into here and we do wood, right? Happy, happy. Some people have said this game is the hardest game in the world. That's bullshit. This is not the hardest game in the world. I would say there are a lot harder games out there, uh, like EVE Online. is certainly a great deal more difficult to me, because it requires the navigation of interpersonal and... Uh, Oh, God. There's just animals fighting people out here. They're fighting birds and shit. As they go on about the world, so... Yeah, I'm gonna add a door to my to-do list fairly quickly. Because it sounds like nature is just baying for my blood at this time. Ooh, bauxite. Excellent. See, all this flooding is gonna be quite useful. Says the man faithfully. But yeah, uh, Dwarf Fortress is not that hard. It's complex. It is a complex game, but it is not a hard game. And some people will say it's incredibly unforgiving. I think that is less than generous to Dwarf Fortress. Dwarf Fortress has a wonderful wiki has a wonderful, wonderful community that will help you learn how to play the fucking game and will offer unique criticism and critique. Not in the sense of you're doing it wrong, but here's what I did on my playthrough. If you can remember an era of the internet before there was a guide on, here's the best way, here's the DPS of all these things, here's the ultimate way to counter this and counter that. Here's the top 10 list of best equipment. All that exhaustive nonsense. Dwarf Fortress exists before then, where it's actually quite difficult to uh, come up with an optimal anything because the game is a bit nasty sometimes. I'm going to let this flood out for a bit. And then I will smooth the walls, which will uh, stop this rock from weeping. Naturally, your dwarves will cancel uh, these orders to do stuff for a bit because they're like rock wet no dig and I'm like no no keep digging and they're like no rock wet and I'm like shut the fuck up and dig you assholes alright so now we have a trade depot not that it matters uh, let's see and we're gonna soon have a nope resume that we're going to start building stone blocks, which is going to be fairly necessary. 
to support our, our nascent industry here. All right. And again, the soundtrack is amazing. It is only recent, the Door Fortress, as in the last year that it had a soundtrack. Um, but that's fine. Because on Sound Sense and uh, modded Door Fortress, which has been available forever, supplemented Door Fortress, I should say, um, it's had Simon Swear's music for a long time. And the base game does have one song that is uh, made by the creator, and it just goes on and on. And if you like that, you can listen to it. It's not bad. Goat has even pointed out that that song is devilishly hard to play. And Goat is an accomplished musician. Door Fortress is, as well, very promising in that it's one of those games that I think the gaming industry could learn from. Because a lot of games and game companies will tell you that you need to make a new game every X amount of months in order to reach the audience and blah blah blah. It's kind of that same sort of nonsensical uh, statement you see said by people on YouTube. You have to constantly make content. You have to constantly be on social media. You need to constantly play these numbers games. No, you don't. That's what they want you to do, but you don't have to. That's a choice. So these guys had made a few games. I mean, Zack and Tarn Adams and... I know their first game was, well, among their first games was a game uh, that was an attempt at an RPG and that I believe it got a little too hard to maintain that project. So they made, you know, I think it, the original title was like Slaves of Blood 2 Armok Door Fortress. No, Armok Slaves of Blood 2 Door Fortress, I think. And it became this. This game has been in development for like 20 fucking years. And it is complex. It is it is complex, but not needlessly complex. Which is great. It's exactly the kind of game that pleases my autism. And it wasn't until recent that, you know, people decided to support these guys on broad scale and help them continue it. And they said they're more than willing to make this game forever. Content to hone their craft forever. And that's what I mean by something game devs could learn from. A game doesn't need to constantly have the bleeding edge in graphics. It doesn't need to have all of these silly things. It only needs to be good. And continue to seek good. Ah, yes, see? Getting my piles of mud on the floor. This is where the, the water will help. I'm going to farm underground like a son of a bitch. Unless I get invaded by necromancers, in which case, it, it'll be over quick. Let's build some walls. What was that? What in the cinnamon toast fuck was that? It's not part of the soundtrack. The Kawadi is fighting, what the fuck? Agitated animal, oh, well, they, they the miner just flattened that. It was like, go fuck yourself. You're between me and my rocks. Good. Remember to build roofs on things in door fortresses? Creatures can climb. Some creatures can even just bash walls down. So you may think, haha, I made a thing. Eh. You attempted to make a thing. So as you can see, water's moving into here. And it will slowly trickle in and fill in this area. The water has its own, di you know, dynamics and fluid moves around. It's really pleasant to watch sometimes. You can also flood a fortress by just getting lost in the moment, which is dumb. But I've done it. I think everyone's done it. All right, where are we going next? That's a lot of stone. 
Rock and stone. Yeah. All right, so what are we gonna do is I'm gonna wait till this floods in a bit and I get a bit more mud in here. Because once I get my piles of mud, I can uh, actually create a really nice, and I do mean a really truly nice uh, base start. I can start farming underground. It's not cheating, it's just letting, na it's working with nature. You're like, oh no, I don't have soil. Let's make some. All right, we got it flowing in. Good, good, good. See, we got all that mud. This is gonna help. It will. <laughs> in before text dooms his fortress. Ah, migrants, excellent. More labor. A fish dissector? You mean a planter? Uh, let's see. Uh, we got a bowyer, which could be another woodworker, which is good. Uh, we need those. We definitely need more woodworkers. Because we're going to need a lot of wood trade goods, probably, for a bit. And we're also going to need more barrels and all these other things. All right. Hmm. All right, we've got our little walls getting put up. Basic, basic stuff. I had one fortress that was horrible because I was getting waves of migrants, just wave after wave of migrants, and it's it's not like RimWorld where a random guy might join you to even out the number of people you have. Um, things you do in your fortress can actually attract people. So, you know, they hear tales of your crafts. They're like, oh, this fortress is really wealthy. Oh, this fortress has a lot of... Um, incredibly, you know, rich people, or this fortress has produced like coins that are now sought and seen throughout the realm, and or you know, artifacts like uh, legendary crafts. You, your guy makes a legendary sword or an axe or a crown, and people will hear about that. People will desire these artifacts. People will actually show up to steal them. What happens in the world kind of propagates, and there's a lot going on in the world outside of your dwarves that is really interesting. I need to keep an eye on this. I think I may have enough to start my uh, farm, so I'm going to go ahead and tell them to smooth stone. Whenever they get around to it, that should help. Let me check on my miners. Okay, make rock blocks? No, no make rock blocks. We're fine for now. We have plenty. For the moment but later on we're gonna make a lot more rock blocks are great it's a great way of making all this rock disappear then I need them to concentrate on their thing see now they're down here smoothing the wall dwarves like smooth they don't use tools to do it so uh Krug smash has been of the opinion that they use their beards, which I'm cool with. I think that's cool to have their, you know, like they, they just run their beards on the wall or floor. They're so mighty beards, they just like hone the walls smooth with it, which is pretty neat. Bauxite. See, we got water coming in. And if you don't watch water, water causes problems. Water can get very deep very quickly. Water can get very dangerous, in fact. Let's do a ramp around the edge of this. Mudstone blocks. Ramp. Mudstone blocks. And then we're going to have a nice little top to our bunker here. Because fuck these guys. Dread Thrifty, an outpost of dwarves, in the mountains where a moron leads them. Alright, let's see how this goes down here. Because once this water uh, stops coming in, I can then go into workshops, farming, farm plot. And, see? I can now have a farm, because I got enough mud to work with. 
There's ways around everything in Dwarf Fortress, so don't, don't let the limitations of your start bother you. Unless you're one of those people that fell into that whole camp of endless... Oh god, there was a whole series of videos on it where it was like, Ice Sheet Start Rim World, One Person Cannibal Run, and it was like a whole summer, that's all people did. And I guess it must have been really hot where they lived, you know, so they were just dreaming of being stuck on an ice sheet or something. Ice sheet starts in Door Fortress are truly terrifying. You'll be like, oh man, everyone's dying of thirst. All the ice is solid, make do. You should have made booze. But in Door Fortress, I, I like that there's a lot of tools to help you, you know, unfuck your situation. This is going to be our farming area. As soon as my farmer gets down here to do something about it. Right now we're building the exterior of our little fort, which is nice. I'm sure you guys remember when like RimWorld was so hot button when it came out, people are trying to push the limits of it. They were like, what if my RimWorld was just babies? And I was like, eh, what if? I had that happen in Dwarf Fortress where I had like 10 waves of migrants from producing these legendary like platinum coins that had attracted families and not workers. So I ended up having all of these families showing up and it was like a lady and four kids, a guy and four kids and I was like, fuck. Because I had all these people that, you know, had enormous baggage trains and demanded all this stuff but I had, I had no workers for my fort. I ended up putting all the kids to work, which is nice in Dwarf Fortress. You can do that. You can be like, kids, haul things. Learn a trade. You can be pretty nuts with this stuff. Okay, so we have our nice bunker. We're building this. We're building that. We're building that. When in doubt over whether or not your uh, shit's handled in Door Fortress, it ain't. So don't get a. Uh, don't think you're you're proof against the elements, because you're not. When in doubt, when in doubt, double check. I once built this amazing fortress and I cut a tree down on the roof and it made a hole in the ground beneath it. And I was like, ah, I'm ready. And the end of that sentence should have been to die. Because that's what happened. Alright, so this is going to be the, the Boozo Mat area. Workshops. Uh, let's do... What is... You know what? I'm just going to have this be for liquor. I can always have another layer for non-liquor related things. There we go. And let's do food. Good. Ah, do you hear the trains in the distance? The ancient dwarven trains? Majestic. Ah yes, the ancient majestic trains of Dwarf Fortress. You can hear them coming through the Underdark to this day. In the D&D &D movie, I, I thought that was kind of funny. The Underdark was really small. Uh, I know that was a budget and time and pacing limitation. I thought that movie was alright. Um, but I, I laughed out loud when I saw how small it was. Because it reminds me of every DM I've ever been with who said you're in the Underdark now. Because they were unwilling uh, more or less to spend a lot of time there. They said, you know, you don't need to be here for that long. And I was like, come on. Come on. Come on, let's go exploring. Let's go to Menzo Baransan. Let's, let's go start a gang war with the drow. Let's go start one of them inner house fights they're famous for. The DM's like, no. Everything in this book will kill you. And I'm like, everything? Will everything in this book kill me? And he's like, yes. Don't touch anything. And I was like, but I want to touch the things. I'm curious. I can't help myself.
All right, let's see. Dusting of mud. Yeah, see, I've got my nice little start to a farm. We're going to grow plump helmets, which the dwarves can use for multiple things. Mainly booze. Yeah, mainly booze. That's that's just, that's largely where it goes. Make sure you always turn this part off so they can't cook it so you get the seeds back. Kind of important. My first few fortresses starved because I cooked the whole thing and then couldn't make the booze they needed and sober dwarves are dangerous things indeed. So I've got my start of my little trade area, not that I have anything to trade. I have an ass load of barrels for when I need that stuff. I'm going to go ahead and start making uh, beds because I'm going to need to start coming up with nice things for these people. I'm going to do some beds and I'm going to do some wheelbarrows because we're going to need those as well. I try to put at least three wheelbarrows in each of my little uh, storage areas so the dwarves will actually use them. gonna make some wheelbarrows they're they're unhappy they're like I don't like being underground and I'm like well go fuck yourself what's funny is you can sit there and uh, what's funny is when you when you sit there and you do go deep enough underground for long enough your dwarves get this trait in the game called cave adaptation where they basically don't like outside anymore. It's kind of like what happened to a lot of us over COVID, but like a lot worse. A lot, lot worse. Like they'll go outside and just start puking. Oh, cool. The outpost liaison has arrived to trade with us. The outpost liaison is like, well... The corporate liaison from Colonial Marines. Not exactly your friend and not exactly your enemy. They'll say, what do you want us to bring next year? And you're like, stuff. Like, I'll go, you know what? Bring me some seeds so I can grow more things. And uh, bring me some fancy cheeses. Because my dwarves demand the fanciest of cheese. There, done. And then they'll tell you what they'll offer for export, like what's what they're looking for and what's not. And they usually come with their little caravan and they have armed guards, which can sometimes save your ass. Sometimes, not always. I've had the caravan show up and I'll be like, ah, praise the mountain homes. The caravan's here to help. And then the caravan gets smoked and I go, oh, uh, uh, uh oh, I'm in trouble. Now, <laughs> maybe. Because sometimes you'd go, I'm in trouble, but there's also free equipment laying on the ground, which is, you know, Hail Cargonia, you gotta get that stuff. So, we need to create some Dwarven bedrooms for these guys. Which shall be easy. I'm going to hit pause while I measure this out because I keep hearing things I don't like. I don't like it. It says it started raining. I don't think that explains the sounds I'm hearing. I don't like it. All right. So, I have a problem, not exactly measured out, and I know some people love their symmetry. So, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna work for you guys. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to make this work out for you. So you don't re... Some people watch everything you do, and then they get mad. They'll say, Tex, that wasn't very symmetrical. And I'm like, life isn't very symmetrical. Your face isn't symmetrical. Slight imperfections are the mark of humanity, as sure as masterwork strokes are. But I guess people aren't prepared for that hard truth. They go, oh no, please. 
Techs don't do this. This is stupid. And I'm like, eh, yeah, it is, but it's my game. I can do what I want. Yeah, not perfectly symmetrical, but good enough. Wow, they brought us a bunch of crap. They're like, would you be interested in a stone corkscrew? Uh, no. Would you be interested in a taco salad? We're, we're a fortress, barely surviving. How about two taco salads? You're like, it, I guess? Fucking weirdos. But look at all this soil we made. We made soil. Pretty handy, that. So I need to start making uh, my my rooms, and then I'm going to have to start filling the rooms with beds and all sorts of other stuff, which, you know, kind of necessary. I think we have enough wheelbarrows. Let's just make some beds. Rock doors, rock blocks. We're going to need enough doors for everybody so that they can close them in the face of their neighbors. They can just close them. All right, we got it. We got this going on. I ain't trading with the trader. He's gonna say, don't you have things you want to trade us? And I'm like, maybe, but not today. Now fuck off. All right, we got rough green jades, which is really nice. Trade Depot. They're just sitting there like, Don't you want this enormous iron corkscrew and these llama trousers? No. No, I don't. Maybe you should bring something nice. They're like, We have a cheese and a lobster. Like, we're pretty far from the ocean. Where'd you get that? Where you? I don't think the lobster is okay. It's kind of like, I'll go out to um, restaurants with friends. And if you live in the Midwest or in an inland area, you know, you'll be like a thousand miles from the ocean. And they'll order fish that says it's fresh. And you're like, okay, doubt. And they will sit there and eat this saltwater ocean going fish and go, I don't think that was very good. And I'm like, no shit. No shit. I, I wonder why. I, I, I am... Perhaps puzzled why you were puzzled that your dining experience was not as promised. It seems as though you feel you have been led astray, but common sense would say this is far from the ocean and the fish doesn't have a, you know, frequent flyer card. I don't think that the fish is going to get there on its own. Perhaps it was frozen. And they're like, no, it's says fresh. And I'm like, well... This was a state that had trout, and the trout was for sale, and they bought it. Sure, that could be a relatively fresh fish. Relatively. But if it wasn't, I mean, you know, seems kind of self-explanatory at that point, don't it? Okay, we got more migrants. Good, more labor. Ooh, a furnace operator. Those guys can be pretty sweet. But I'm going to have him also double as an engraver and a stone worker. A peasant is going to be doing some hauling until we get a military. Then he's going to be doing some ass kicking. I'm also going to have my gym setter and my... No, not haul. I, I don't want him to haul. What? I, bah? Oh, things moved around. That's why I was confused. I was like, what the fuck? All right, there we go. Oh, there goes that cat. There are a number of BPL mods for Dwarf Fortress on Steam. They're all created by Mr. Hat, the same guy who did the hilarious mods for Xenonauts that are also awesome. And uh, one, of the, one of the mods is called Turbo Cats. And it makes the cats as fast as, like, projectiles. Like, from ballista and crossbows. They just... 
go across the map like bullets. It's good stuff. Maybe not the smartest thing we've ever done, but well, Hat took my diseased idea and turned it into diseased reality. <laughs> okay, the merchants are leaving. They're like, you won't buy anything. And I'm like, yep. You can go fuck yourself. No thanks. Go away. All right. Soon enough, we shall have some nice rooms. But first, I'm going to smooth all that stone. So the dwarves come in here and they're like, this is really nice. And then they won't kill me in my sleep. That's that's the hope. Don't want them to go crazy now, do we? So we got plenty of doors, which we're going to need to ensure their relative privacy. Beds, we have some. I think we have enough beds, that's good. All right, instead of beds, I'm gonna make them make uh, bins, which are gonna be useful for storage. You're gonna need that. There you go. Some of the dwarves are like, eh, because they don't like outside. So they go outside and get a little wet. You know, the, the it, rain falls on them and they are offended. That guy's sleeping on the roof. He didn't give a fuck. He's just hanging out. This guy's dreaming of, what's he thinking of? You know what, let's look at his thoughts. Grouchy. He's grouchy after being caught in the rain. Dwarves fucking hate rain. They love mist from waterfalls. The cascading mists of waterfalls pleases them to no end. Rain though, ugh. No thanks. Not big for them. All right, so we have some some plant stockpiles. Our drink stockpile is not that not that good, but I'm hoping to rectify that. I will make a sad room here for the broker to sit in and do his paperwork. When the broker sits in there and does their paperwork, they'll be like, "We have four things left," and you're like, "Uh huh." Get back to work, nerd. And then he's sad because no one invites him to the dwarven parties. And if you're curious, the dwarven, uh, the dwarf fortress soundtrack is on uh, SoundCloud. It's uh, Simon Swearer, S W E R E R. Um, great fucking soundtrack. Fantastic fucking soundtrack. One of my favorites is Kogan Usan which is the Dwarven name for Boat Murdered, which if you don't know what Boat Murdered is, stop listening to this right now. Don't go search for it on YouTube. Go read it. Boat Murdered is an OG Let's Play. Back in the days, Let's Plays weren't on YouTube. I know younger people are freaking out at this, that there was a text-based Let's Play format, but there was. Let's Play started on the Let's Play section of the Something Awful forums, and then later, I believe, their own website called Let's Play. And if you go to that, and you go search... Hold on, I need to make this... Fill in this hole here. If you go search there, there is the story of Boat Murdered. I know people have made it in video format. I know people have made videos about Boat Murdered. Don't. Don't go there. Go read the saga of Boat Murdered and the original frustrating text. Trust me, it is glorious. All right. Well, it's not glorious, it's terrifying. But it spawned a song, Kol Ganusan, great song. Which I believe is in the Steam release, um, but I've only ever heard it after I doomed a fortress. Which I think it may have some trigger conditions. Which is fine, I think that's hilarious. Ah oh, yes, made a masterpiece wood bin. Good. Now I'm going to leave a gap, 
a few gaps in the ceiling, which some people are going to go, why? The reason I'm going to leave some gaps in the ceiling is because I'm going to have some surface farms. How cool is that? And I'm going to grow some exotic other things that I can use for enhancing the booze stockpiles and food stockpiles of my dwarves so that they may have some variety. Once we smooth all this out, I will be putting rooms together for the dwarves. Uh, mudstone. Wow, that door's probably gonna suck. Slam that door and it explodes. I once had a fortress where everything was made out of chalk. Ah yes, the hawk. The train of Cardor. Alright. There's still some mud left over, which is fine. We have plenty of good material here to work with. I'm not going to start telling them to make alcohol until we're very low. Because I want them to build up a bit more of a stockpile. Again, if you want to see somebody who really makes this game sing and tells great stories about it, and is of good cheer and good character, Krug Smash. Mudstone. A colony of termites is just out on my yard. Alright, I'm gonna leave them alone. Alright, we're getting there with our smoothing, but we have more pissed dwarves than happy dwarves. Most, most of the dwarves are between good and eh, but we are starting to get some upsetty spaghetti gentlemen. And ladies. I'm gonna try to stay away from the river. There's the bones of that Kuwati. There's the raven corpse. Well, the game specifies agitated raven. Alright, I'm gonna remove the wagon. As we've landed here and we don't need it anymore. So you just see the bunker coming out of the mountain here, which is cool. And then I'm going to build a happy drawbridge here that I can pull up in case I need to tell these people to fuck off. Which I will. I will definitely need to build that. This is, this is inevitable in Dwarf Fortress. You will inevitably need to build some fuck off mechanisms. Infamously, Boat Murdered had a magma world killing machine, which was pretty neat. They could pull some levers and then they later forgot which levers, which was terrifying but you could just pull a lever and have magma come out as a doomsday device and it it was great it wasn't sane but it was great it was it was like a bond villain thing it just they had they had a doomsday device you could pull a lever and door it just magma came out of this hole in the fortress on the front of it like and it just covered the ground and it just started eating things which I guess is the point of a doomsday device, really. To destroy. I mean, it's not there for hugs now, is it? I don't think so. Yes, I hear the wolves go away. Lots of rhino lizards that have been smashed. I think the cat's been getting them, which is fine. That's their point. Cats exist in Dwarf Fortress to annihilate things. Usually your frame rate, but... That is the point of these animals. Now once I get all this done, I should be able to put uh, dwarves in beds. And see, you put beds in there. And now they have, they have happy beds. And they should have, you know, some bedrooms. And they should be okay for the most part. Not really. They'll be pissed for one reason or another. But at least they'll be able to sleep soundly. Kind of. They're all thinking of happy things. Looks like. Smashing tourmaline. Good, good. Now once I've knocked out a few more of these areas. I will have a floor above the farm. 
which is going to be for butchery and kitchens. And then I'll have a floor above that in which I will create a grand dining hall. So the dwarves can sit around and be like, oh, yes, uh, very good, uh, 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 you know, and do their normal dwarfy stuff. They can talk about how great their existence is or how terrible, either or. But, uh, yeah, looks like our farm is doing okay. We're getting lots of plant stockpiled. The drink stockpile is starting to get very perilously low. So I'm going to have them start making booze. You don't need that many stills and you don't need a huge farm. You just need some and some. All right, mining is going on. There we go. But yeah, this year I was thinking of a lot of things. It's kind of weird. Having long COVID for a year makes you realize suddenly how bulletproof you used to feel thinking that nothing bad, you know, could like happen to you. And then something bad happens to you and it keeps happening and there's no real solution to it. And rather than bitch about it or just sit there and, well, I have bitched about it. I've kvetched forever. Rather than let it define, I should say, my existence, it has been a companion to it. And I've been sitting there going like, fuck this fucking shit, man. But you don't give up. You know, I don't want people to think that part of all this is me in a roundabout way going, oh man, it's too hard, blah, blah, blah. I think it's just been a time of learning for me, trying to realize that, you know, I come from an era where you, you would frequently hear that annoying phrase, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, and frequently by people who never really had to try that hard in the first place. But to each their own, you know, all journeys are unique. Not everyone's going to have an easy time with stuff. And I've realized as time goes on, it's struggling through shit that gives you the resolve. It's getting punched in the face that gives you that sense of purpose. You know, getting knocked down kind of makes you want to fight harder. It's kind of like my thesis of the charger. I didn't hear no bell. Nobody's gonna fucking stop me. Only I can stop me. And that's true. You're only stopped when you give up. And while a lot of YouTubers I've found are quite frequently trying to chase this better, better, best, I must be number one, constant churn of content, why isn't this performing well? Every time we have a hard time, my team and I realize we're lucky to just be here. We're lucky to just be able to share this stuff with you. We're lucky to have anything. Because there's plenty of great content creators out there who never got their just due or never got their, their praise or stopped making things entirely. Because, you know, life ate them up. And the trick is to not let it do that. Easier said than done, I know. But for years and years I've said, I'm just a voice in the choir. And in the time we have together, I'd rather remark upon how fun games like this are to help you distract yourself and lose yourself in hard times versus complaining endlessly about the seeming injustices of it. Because life is plenty unjust if you look at it hard enough. But finding these little ga games and you know, just little moments that help you lift yourself up are really important. That's why I think it's great to have games. It's great to have RPGs, a little bit of escapism. And Dwarf Fortress is something special. Always has been. That's why no matter what sort of colony simulator comes out, no matter what sort of latest and greatest comes out promising the highest fidelity of simulation of X, Y, and Z. I come back to Dwarf Fortress. Something about it is both cheerful and menacing, which is like life, really. Cheerful and menacing. It's 
a combination and conflux of things that I cannot really readily describe to you. And if I tried, I think I would lack the language and the diction to be able to do it effectively. So I hope by combination of my words in this Let's Play and suggesting you go watch people who are truly gifted at this game like Krug Smash. Oh God, what is happening? Oh God damn it. All right. So one of my dwarves has withdrawn from society, which happens. They occasionally have these like little moments where they go a little crazy. And in going crazy, they start to say like, oh, I've heard the voices of the gods and the gods want me to make this, you know, statue of a cat and I need to do it right fucking now or I'm gonna stab everyone in the mouth and they will they will do that okay Sazier the gym setter where the fuck are you what is he what is he screaming about it's raining on me it's annoying okay I don't think we have the right materials or even the craft shop to make what they want, so I'm gonna have to get stepping on that. And considering they're gym setter, it's probably gym related. Now, if you don't help them realize their aspirations, they will go insane. And I don't mean a little haha -ha funny, I mean, they'll stab motherfuckers. They just like pull out a switchblade and. No, they don't. They, they usually will just either go crazy or they, they will actually become violent sometimes. They'll be like, hey, remember that magnum opus you didn't let me build? And you're like, no. And then they just kill somebody or tear their face off or walk despondently out into the wilderness, seeking oblivion. So you should probably deal with it. Okay. I need to set some higher priority mining. And that's fine. Watch this. What you do is you go into your mining, and go over here and you're like, uh, hi. My, mmm. Actually. DX for, God, man, I still doing the, still doing my manual priorities for shit because I'm, I'm very stuck in my ways. DX is remove things because d for dig that says the hot key is yeah see dx designate remove m is for mining now okay where's my miners miners they're master miners which is cool they're probably running up and down the fortress. Come on, you assholes, where are you? I have to help this guy build his thing before he goes crazy. A lot of dwarves do go crazy in the end, but this is preventable, which is why I'm trying to get on it. He's sleeping and he's making rock blocks. All right, I have enough dwarves to where I can remove them from some of these tasks. All right, let's see. Stone cutters, uh, let's see, no, no. I will let them do engraving though. All right, there. And I'll probably cancel. There, no rock blocks. Stop making rock blocks. There, now they're going crazy. When you have might, all your dwarves have skills and they go up and down based on how they use them. And it is attritional, so if they don't use their skills regularly, they do go away. But it's pretty awesome to see like a master engraver. Uh, because the dwarves have a memory and they remember everything they see and encounter, but they also have the memory of things that came before. So they will talk about, you know, the collapse of old fortresses or the great killing of, of, of beasts of legend, which is pretty neat. 
Because sometimes you'll see them carve their mythology or, you know, symbols of their government or they'll remember when this one guy did this one really dumb thing um, by mocking them. Let us be like, ah, yes, this is the story of that guy dying to, you know, a badger. But back what I was saying about, uh, you know, content creation. When it comes down to modern content creation, a lot of people will see TikTok or all that other stuff, and they think they have to be that person. They have to be successful. They have to make a hit. They have to, you know, do this. And I remember when this all started on YouTube, and God, before YouTube, people felt that they needed to make viral video, is what they called it back in the day. And I will tell you first and foremost, no, you do not. Make something you like. If you make something you like, and only something you like, you will attract people to your work who appreciate you for you, whatever it is you like, whatever it is that pleases you. You will find your audience, and that is what's important. Don't try to fit in, and don't try to, oh, I think this is our gym setter. Yep, okay. So you saw him run back and forth, right? He ran back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's him getting things. This happens whenever they set up in the corner. Then he starts sketching pictures. He needs rough gems and he needs... Okay, I don't think we have any... Uh, we don't have... Okay, there are some rough gems. But he says we need stacked leather. We don't have any stacked leather yet. It's not to say we can't. All right. Uh, we're going to need to slaughter some animals. And I know exactly where to do this. Outside. Workshops. Uh, farming. Okay, I'm going to have the butcher be outside. So the stink don't get inside. And we're going to have the uh, tanner right next to it. There we go. And we have some animals that have just been running around the fortress. And it's time to turn uh, these cats into handbags if we need to. Don't kill cats in Dwarf Fortress. Your dwarves will go insane. Cats also are unique in Dwarf Fortress because they will, in every way, select dwarves. They adopt dwarves. Dwarves don't adopt them, which is kind of interesting. Kitchen. Okay, that's good. Good, 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 good. Creatures. Pets. Livestock. Water buffalo. Kill, kill. Leaving the cat alone. Leaving the cat alone. Yeah, it's it's kind of strange. Um, in content creation, I come from an era where there was a series of, of YouTubers, many of which are no longer doing this. Most of them are no longer doing this. Um, series of YouTubers who used to do what's called a long play. And a long play is essentially doing what I'm doing now. It's where I began. Unedited, largely unedited. And you would just have a game from start to finish or start to whenever you got bored with it or it broke. And you just recorded whatever happened. Okay, he's going to tan a hide, which doesn't take that long in Dwarf Fortress. It takes a bit in real life. And having done it once, uh, gross pass. So if I can tan this hide, the guy will get the leather he needs, and then he will craft a wondrous item. When your dwarves are seized by these impulses, they will make wondrous crafts, and they will bring fame to your fortress. Sometimes these crafts are just useless, though. They'll be like, I made a toy trumpet out of quartz, and you're like, why? Or they'll, they'll make a ring out of leather, which is weird, or S&M gear, I guess. Either or. You know, not not something I need. All right, I'm going to set tanning that hide to high priority. Hide priority? Huh? No. Uh, there we go. We're just going to kill these aminals. And there's just piles of meat now laying out there rotting, which is fantastic. All right. He's working secretly. That means he has what he needs now. So we, we acted just in time. They can still lose their mind, and there is a there's like a ticking time bomb, essentially. 
in uh and how long they will wait for this stuff which can be not not that long ah oh a tiger eye table it's actually kind of cool all right never mind sorry for talking smack This is going to be a crafts dwarf shop where they make all sorts of nice things in here. Alright, jeweler's workshop. We're going to be cutting some gems so we have something to trade. We're going to knock all this down. Green jades and whatever else. We're going to set up a, a food area here. I'm going to go ahead and reprioritize these. Finish the room out. A little bit neurotic in that. And then uh, this will be the cooking area. The cookery. This is where they will make many fine meals and store them. And I will have two layers of food storage. And above that, I will have a big dining hall. As I scratch my beard and do some pondering. Good, they're moving all the crap over there that I don't need, which is good. The problem with your butcher shop is they will leave all this meat here until it gets really gross. And then they'll be like, there's a big pile of stink there. And I'm like, yeah, you left a bunch of meat in the sun. they are like, I don't like it. And I'm like, well, you're dumb. How's that? And then they get upset. Nobody likes being called dumb, especially when you've done something dumb. Ah, yes. Just leave the meat on the floor. I'm going to tell them to start cooking meals. And we will hopefully have some nice options, some nice meal options. Better than MRE meal options at any rate, you know. Saving adventure data. Now, the Steam version of Dwarf Fortress doesn't have adventure mode yet, which some would say is the best part of the game. If you can imagine, it's kind of like a Dwarf Fortress Caves of Cud before Caves of Cud came out, which is pretty neat. Okay, I need this to actually rotate this way. And I'm going to make my... I remember one time I made one of these drawbridges out of tin, which everyone, you know, mocked me. Uh, mercilessly for in the in the Black Pants Legion. Because you can imagine just a tin door flapping in the wind, you know, when you pull it up. Just like a tin roof. Not that smart. Ah, see, there's the stink, the miasma. Because they have not paid attention. And they have just let stuff rot. But they are slowly carrying it out there. This is why you try to keep this shit away from the rest of your fortress. Because inevitably you will fuck it up. And that just happens. So let's make more rock blocks and get some of this shit out of here. Not a rock alt. Actually, maybe in time. And then what we need to do is we need to build... Uh, you know what? I'm going to give every dwarf in their room their own statue. Every dwarf a statue. I'm going to Huey Long this stuff. Oh, and cabinets. Cabinets and statues. I'm going to make sure everybody knows that... They are entitled. Is a, is a dwarf not entitled to their the statue of the great leader pointing at them as they sleep? I'd be like, good God, why? And the statues come in many forms. They they can be of epic conquests or a like, particularly fancy wheel of cheese or all sorts of stuff. It's kind of dumb. But, you know, dwarves are dwarves and they like what they like. I need to move that back to normal priority. 
And I need to make more rooms for these guys. It's a lot of stink in there. All right, where are we? Wooden bins and wooden bins. Let's go back to making beds because we're probably going to need them. We're deforesting things. Fuck elves. Got it. Oh, yeah, that guy's in the stink room. There we go. This one is just going to be an apartment complex floor. I'm not going to put any side rooms for gathering halls and stuff. Going to be relatively different. I know some people love making beautiful symmetry in their for fortresses, and I'm, I'm not that guy. Never have been, never will be. Krug Smash has made some absolutely gorgeously beautiful things in Dwarf Fortress. I'm one of those who sits back and marvels. I look upon their works ye mighty, and I despair. But I enjoy looking at them. There we go. Got it. Make, cut gems, craft things. Let's see, rock. Mm. Ooh, you know what I can do is I can make some rock hives so I can start my honey business. My business, right? I know that sounds dumb, but shut up. Oh, by the way, if you are ever in a desert biome or something that doesn't have trees and you feel you fucked up, you don't have to quit. Uh, you can go into here and open rock and then make jugs. Rock jugs can carry liquid. You don't need to use barrels for everything. You can have all sorts of fun. Though I imagine rock jugs would be a lot heavier. Waiter, please bring me a jug of wine. And he's just absolutely yoked from carrying around a rock. Uh, let's see. We're going to gather all these plants and such. And I'm going to see what we get seed-wise from them. Because I know some of these I could actually turn into surface crops. And I can cultivate my own weird stuff. And uh, that'll, that'll make me have some variety, which is important. Striking magnetite and such, which is good. Furnaces. Let's see. What do I need? Ah, yeah. Wood furnaces. Need to make charcoal. This is going to be the charcoal and wood area. And then I go into custom and I go... We will put wood in there. And then finished goods. Ah, uh, let's see. Other materials. Um... Bars and blocks. I think it is actually coal. Yes. And then you know what? I'll just leave it there. This is going to be where we make coal for uh, the forges. We're going to have layers of industry as we go through, which is going to be pretty neat. These dwarves are busy making stuff, which is good. And it seems like the dwarves are now trending toward moderate unhappy, but not truly unhappy, which I suppose most people are trending toward, world being what it is. I hear distant rumbling in the fortress. That doesn't please me at all. All right, what else we got? 
okay, the bridge is done. I need to build a mechanisms uh, table so I can build rock gears, which is about as safe in real life as you could imagine. And then once I cut some gears, I can build uh, the correct mechanisms to build a lever so that I can uh, destroy things. Make charcoal. Make charcoal. We're going to turn all those trees into smoke. And then with all that charcoal, I can run some forges. Now, if I was above a volcano, I can make magma forges and magma smelters, which is cool. That's just metal as shit. I dig it. A lot of magnetite, which is good. So I got my forges here, and then I can, or rather my furnaces, turning wood into charcoal then what I will do is have smelters and I will start smelting this and then I'll have uh, a weaponsmith turning my smelts into other things like coins, armor, weapons, all that good shit that dwarves need to grow up all big and strong and hate elves, as you do. All right, there we go. We got that. We're going to smooth all these because I'm going to build a road. We're going to pave the world. One of my long-standing fascinations in games like this is changing the world the way I want. Might even redirect that river later or it should. If the weather holds and I don't think that it's going to go bad, I might not only redirect that river, I may go put some uh, water wheels in it and use it to drive pumps. You can do that in Door Fortress. All right, this layer is going to need to be smoothed out. All right, my businesses and foundries are all working. And let's go into workshops and let's go into, uh, let's say, furnaces, right? We go into smeltery. Shale. Uh huh. Shale. There we go. And then workshops. I'm going to make only one metalsmith because I only have one anvil right now. And that's fine. This area is going to be. When you go into stone, you go into metal ores, not the rest. And economic. Uh, no. Then you go into bars and blocks. Bars, yes. Simple as. And you go back up to your uh, wood stockpile. Or sorry, your, not your wood. Your stone stockpile, right? And you hit view stockpile and you go into here. Not there. What did I do? Ah, here. And you go metal ores, no. And that way, they slowly start transferring all the metal ores to the ore stockpile that is appropriate. No. There we go. Now they'll all float it where it needs to be. No migrants this season. Also, in Dwarf Fortress, things are happening off screen, which is pretty neat. Kitchen, make food. And let's go into our kitchen settings and see what we got. Oh, we got alfalfa and apples, potatoes, taters. What's taters? Hmm. Cherries. I'm going to say that we can't cook with the apples and the cherries and let's just make booze out of it. Yeah, that sounds right. But we could just do some of that. Wow, farm plot. It says nothing will grow here. They're like, no. Well, fine. It just means we haven't found anything we can grow there yet. Yet. Let's see, we got an open space so that it is getting light. We just haven't found the right seeds yet. Oh, look, there's colonies of bumblebees. That means we can start a bee farm. I know it's not called a bee farm, 
Please don't write letters. The wolves are mad at me again. God damn it. Wood bins, make beds, good. Speaking of make beds, go make your bed. You probably haven't today. Don't lie to me. While you're at it, you know, pick up your, your cups and plates and take them out of your room. Put them in the kitchen where they belong. Be a good boy. Alright there, we're going to prepare lots of easy meals. We probably need more barrels at a certain point. Because our farm is really kicking ass, which is nice. Drink and plant stockpiles are good, though we don't have an exact figure on that yet, because we don't have a guy who's willing to count them full time yet. I'll, his office is going to be up here. That's why I set it there, but I got distracted. Okay, we're going to do some tables for a while. And some chairs. Or thrones, really. Okay, no more beds. Let's make some barrels for storage. Bins and barrels, very important. And we're going to continue knocking trees down and destroying nature. Because fuck nature. It's full of stuff that's bad. Where do insects that bother you come from, huh? Yeah, it's right, outside. That's why you can't trust outside. I'm gonna slowly start smoothing all of the uh, stuff in my fortress, which makes the dwarves a bit more happy. And I'm gonna slowly start engraving all of it soon. So then they'll have like a really neat history of all the things they've seen and what they like and what they fucking can't stand and all that good stuff. All right, let's get into, uh, uh, yeah, Bowyer, Ashery, a bunch of other stuff. Mechanic, I'm gonna put in this corner here. Actually, wait a second. View stockpile. I just need to repaint the stockpile here. That much. There we go. Let me go into workshops and we're gonna go get into the mechanic here. That'll give this guy room to do fun things. Jewelers workshops. I'm just gonna cut gems like crazy as soon as I find them. Yeah, we're gonna have a cavern mechanic here, and he's gonna sit here and start working. Since he starts working, it'll be okay, maybe. All right, this is gonna be our dining hall, which is gonna be pretty neat. This is where they're all gonna sit around and do stuff. They're gonna be like, man, I sure like doing stuff, and I'm like, uh-huh. We got plenty of stuff. It is late spring year 101. Considering we started in year 100 and we're still alive, leads me to believe I am slowly regaining some of the competency I once possessed in Dwarf Fortress. Not all of it, obviously, but some. Let's see, furniture. We're going to do a table. Oh, there's the, the legendary table. The legendary table. Excellent. I'm going to put the legendary table in this room. Because when the dwarves see that, they will lose their shit. They will be like, oh my god, is that that tiger-eyed table that crazy person made? And I'm like, the very same. And they will they will come unglued. They will go, I, I did not know this table existed. I am born again. I have drank from the waters of a new and bold age. This table has redefined my existence at this place and time. But as we put all this in here, the doors will see it and go absolutely ape. It is, it is a tiger eye table. It's, I can only imagine how fucking heavy that is. All right, there we go. Now, we, we make this room, we go meeting area, and we go do 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 do, and we go yep, and we go, uh, yeah, this is a, uh, Hmm. Hmm. Nope, it's not that. I fucked that up. 
dining hall. Yes. Except dining hall. And they sit in there and they go, oh my God, look at all these nice things. Look at how wonderful all this food is. And I'm like, it's food. Excellent. See, now they have two dining halls and they can't complain. Eat without table my ass. Only took a year till we invented the technology for tables. But see, he's sitting at that tiger eye table and he's going to be like, holy shit. What a golden age. Now in time, I will create a grand dining hall, you know, where they can gather or mausoleum. I haven't decided yet. It's one of those things. But I'm trying to keep the, the rotten food area a little bit further away from the current dwarf congregation area. In theory. All right. Uh, rock hives. Got it. Okay. He's making charcoal, which is fucking great. I need you to make rock mechanisms. And I'm going to need the smelters to start smelting magnetite because we have a fuckload of it. And uh, tetrahedrite as well, not as much. We're going to start making business. I might make some coins. Coins aren't worth a lot, but that's kind of fun. You can put your face in metal. So I've got some iron bars now. Nice. You know what? Just to fuck the elves, I, I think I should make uh, this this outer patio out of cherry wood. Because when they say who chopped that cherry tree, I'm going to be like, this guy. And the elves will show up and they'll be like, I don't like this. And I'm like, good. <sighs> oh, this may be the end of the fortress here. The enemy has shown up. What is it? Leopard Man, Pike Man, Ruined Ghoul. Ah. Alright, let's see what they bring. Where's the, where's the siege? Ah, the music has changed. Did they just leave? I saw them at the edge of the map. But not anymore. It must be that necromancer sending his boys out from the tower. Others. No, it looks like they just left. This may just be a scouting party. Yeah, I need to get my drawbridge up. So they sent a leopard man. Which is, there's a lot of animal man hybrids in Dwarf Fortress. But this song is called Siege. Simon Swearer again. If you ever want to know where things are, your uninvited guests and what have you. Looks like we don't have... Looks like we don't have any others. It looks like he just popped his head in and then left. He's probably going to bring back more. They will return in in greater numbers. So I need to redouble my efforts to actually build some defenses and probably get a military started. Usually you don't even get that much warning. It's like, hey, by the way, and dead. Especially with a necromancer tower nearby. All right, I'm going to put a lever here. And I'm going to have it connect to that drawbridge. Uh-oh. Intruders. Where? There they are. Dwarf Cheese Necromancer, huh? There we go, see? Cheesemaker Necromancer and a Woodcutter Necromancer. So this is a, uh... This is definitely... The work of foul magic. And that's fine. That's a dwarven child. They are, they are threatening a child, which is showing how tough these guys are. So we're going to need to get into our nobles menu. Go away. And we're going to need the militia commander. Ah, yes. We have a peasant who's an adequate tactician, so let's hope he'll be our Cincinnatus here. 
Create new squad, no uniform. The Nets of Deifying, that's the name of them. Okay, well, guess what? We're gonna need to get into the actual squad composition, which at this point is gonna be everybody. And then we're gonna go back to squads, and we're gonna go, oh no, you're on duty. And you're gonna go kill that zombie. Confirm. Get in there and kill. The child is chasing the zombies off. The military showed up. The boys. I don't see him. Huh. Well, we chased him off, I guess. I told them to kill something, but it hasn't shown up yet again. The cat showed up to get in on this. All right. And the dwarves are out there just waiting. Disband the squad. Go back to your jobs. God damn. That had me spooked a moment. They will return though. I need to get ready. I need to get this drawbridge done so I can pull it up whenever that happens. And I'll be like, everybody who's outside can go fuck themselves. And uh I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be like, nope. I'm gonna sit in here with my tiger eye table. And I will uh, tell you guys to fuck right off. Tetrahedrite, metal smith, rock mechanisms. All right, good, good, good. We have more than enough food to withstand a siege, which I'm not really worried about. Now, if the enemy is dumb enough, they will attack when you have a set of guests, like a military visiting. And you can just smoke them, which is nice. I'm going to go ahead and remove my farm attempt out here. And I'm going to fill in those holes in my roof because I obviously don't need to fuck around with any weaknesses to my defense. I've just been reinforced to earn. I've been just reminded of how absolutely terrifying uh, the outside is. So let's let's not... Let's not feed into the enemy here. And I have an idea that may help my uh, base, as it were, get some actual free defenders. Because if you can't make a moat of lava, you can make a moat out of alcohol. And I know how to do this. Basically, you turn the front of this base into a tavern and you fill it with drunks and when people attack your fortress, they have to get through like 800 morns. If you understand that reference. And uh, yeah, that, that should actually solve the problem. It may create problems of its own, but you know, to each their own, we'll figure it out. It's a very good way of doing things. All right. Uh, kitchen. Make food. Yeah, we have plenty, uh, it looks like. I'm going to tell them to leave this fallow for two months out of the year because we have more than enough plants and I may change it up and have them grow four different crops. You really don't need a large uh, farm to support a large fortress, which is very true. A lot of people think you need huge farms, and you can if you want to export alcohol, which can be very good for you, or support a giant tavern, which I frequently do. Because booze moat is a really good idea. Okay, we have a militia commander at least. 
so I can build another military chop chop if I need to. I'm worried though. I'm very worried. They've already had one close call with assholes. You never know when there will be more. We should have more than enough bedrooms, hopefully. I'm trying to balance a bunch of different things. But this is going to be a bit of a problem. No migrants want to show up because... Well, they probably heard about the fucking doom attack out front. They were like, yeah, no. Uh-uh. Oh, what, what? I must have rough gems. I must have rock blocks. I must have logs. I forgot this guy was doing stuff. This could be a problem. Okay, um... I think I've cut all the rough gems. Which is not so great. Alright, well fuck it. Here we go, we ball. Now, what's one thing that's really neat about Dwarf Fortress, which people have forgotten about, is it is a game that actually gave us a really interesting method of play, left over from the earlier days of the internet, called a legacy game, or a succession game, which is where multiple players would take turns every year, usually at the turn of uh, the year, sometimes in the summer, uh, that would let players play out the legacy or dynasties of a fortress, each in turn, at the end of their turn, naming a dwarf for themselves and making their additions to the fortress and writing a brief history that maybe doesn't capture everything, which was something that happened with Boat Murdered. That's not just a let's play of one hand, but many factually working together, which is kind of neat and also kind of funny. Because, you know, somebody would make like a doomsday weapon and people would forget um, how it worked or what lever made it work. And they'd be like, hey, uh, guys, which one, which one does the, the destroy the elves and which one does the not destroy the elves? And, you know, indifferent shrug. That happens, you know. But now everyone has beds. Well, not everyone. We're getting there. We're getting there. All right. Oh, God. I'm really worried those guys are going to come back and fuck our shit up. They're, they're going to just come back and kill everyone with a hammer. Which is not great. These people are doing their thing. I wish we had more miners. One of my starts has like five miners, and some people think that's excessive, but I've of late I've been doing the go deep thing, you know. Dig greedily and deep, but I try to shoot for the cavern layer. I found that, um, well, most people don't know this, but over here is the elevation of Dwarf Fortress. And yeah, the elevation goes quite high on most maps. Oh, and he went berserk. He bled to death after going berserk because someone beat him to death. Which, yep, there he is. Dead man. Dead dude. All right. I'm going to make sure that, uh, you know, people reclaim his his things yeah he went nuts after not being able to craft his thing and so they beat him to death which is the normal dwarven thing when someone goes crazy he he had to have himself a big old scream and they were like, uh-huh. 
And he was like, I can't stand it anymore. I'm mad as heck and I can't stand it anymore. And they were like, uh huh. And then he, he was screaming that, you know, the world was unjust and all this other stuff. And they're like, uh huh. And then he acted a fool and they beat him to death. That, that is, that is what happens when dwarves go crazy. Now, sometimes they're not seized by a creative mood, but if things are truly sinister outside, they can be seized by like a fell mood. And they will kill and use a dwarf's, like, spine to make their art. Pretty metal, but not exactly great. I need to build a little barrier room, or burial room, and I know where to do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna build a, a very simple tomb. We're going to put our, our quote-unquote honored dead, a.k.a. the people we beat to death in the workshop, uh, into these holes, and they, they will live in there. And people will be like, wow, these guys died. And I'll be like, yep. They still haven't built that lever. Assholes. Rock tables, rock thrones. I think I have enough of those. Uh, back to rock blocks. We're going to need a lot of them. <sighs> yeah. Already one dwarf down because he had to have himself a temper tantrum. All right. We've got plenty of smelting going on, which is pleasing me. I should be able to start building stuff soon. I'm going to continue going down this nice big square because I have this square and a few rectangles as we get closer to the top, but it's kind of like an ant hive. You just keep going down and building your fortress. That's pretty much how it is. Welcome to Dread Thrifty. We have good discounts on things. In fact, we haven't... Well, soon enough, there should be... There should be a trade caravan. And if I do it right... God, stink clouds keep coming out of here. I think there's this body is in there as well. Oh, there's a hoof. Oh, yeah, there's his body. It is spattered with his blood. Yeah, well, he got beat to death for acting a fool. That's what happens. Workplace disagreements. Need to start building coffins. Boat Murdered was kind of infamous because it built a, a legendary coffin. They had a lot of death in Boat Murdered. One of the main causes of death was an elephant problem. That became, soon enough, legendary. But I'm going to build the roof on this so they can't run up the slope and then get in here and ch drop down and start kung fu and people. Okay, we finally got that lever, link lever, to that. A link lever. Uh, cannot link to shale bridge. Why? You know what? Fine. I'll put it closer, maybe. Because it should be able to retract. Why no... Do I not have enough mechanisms? That could be a problem. I may not have enough mechanisms. I'll just build another one, don't worry. He's going to be making lots of rock mechanisms. Rock gears and such. Those of you who've had to cut gears are probably going to be screaming. Rocks are not a good thing to make gears out of. Yes, I agree. Are there any 
gems to cut? Maybe. Okay, are we getting there? Yeah, we don't. All right. If we don't get more migrants soon, I'm going to have to hyper-specialize all these dwarves' labors. Which is fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're getting there. This guy's all sad. Why are you sad? Annoyed. I don't have a cup, a goblet, or a mug. Well, I'll make some. How's that? Rock hives? No more. Rock? Mugs. There. Simple. Rock. Mugs. Simple. See? You'll have plenty. Now shut up. As soon as we remove these farm plots and fill in the roof, I can then start to, uh... I can then start to do dumb lever. Rock mechanisms, yes. Please no whammies. Please no whammies, please no whammies. Drink 900, plant. 700-ish. Alright, where are we with our... We have plenty going on here, which is nice. I mean, they're starting to enjoy our uh, fortress's various uh, various accoutrements. Mmm, bones. There's this mangled skeleton. That's what you get. Step out of line in the factory? That's a paddling. Alright, let's see. Wooden bins, wooden barrels. I think we have enough for now. I'm gonna tell them to cease their labors. Rock blocks we have plenty of, I think. Tell them to cease their labors for now. And I'm gonna hope to free some of these people up to go do... Yeah, see, they're gonna go start installing stuff. It is a dwarf power issue, as we don't have enough dwarves to do all of the tasks. So I'm gonna free some of these people up from their labors. Charcoal. I'm gonna keep the smelters going. Rock mechanisms guy can step off. The smelters can keep running. Uh, kitchen probably is fine. The stills are more than fine. We we have more than enough booze. All right. Rock mugs they're gonna be making for a while. Jeweler workshops are fine. Everything should be fine. Okay. Silty clay, huh? Well. I think this is all mudstone. I'm not sure. All right. So, we're starting to get there. Okay, a link lever to that. Link lever to that. Cannot link to shale bridge. Why? Shale bridge. I'm going to remove that fucking thing and rebuild it. I probably fucked something up, and that's fine. I made us do a wooden drawbridge or something. I also should probably start making traps. Zambles and such. Just put traps all around the outside of my fortress. The trick is to get them to actually step into the traps. A caravan has arrived. Thank, thank fuck. 
All right, let's see what we have to trade. Uh, let's see, body parts. Mm, uh, got a lot of cabinets, which are nice. Cut gems. We have no idea what they're worth, but yeah. Ooh, footwear. You want some shoes? They've only been murdered. I mean, uh, they belong to a guy. Gently used. Dwarven biscuits. Wine biscuits at that. I'm gonna I'm gonna give over some of our fine crafts and hope that works for the interim. Ah oh boy. Alright, let's get into our no nobles, and then we go into broker and bookkeeper. Where's this asshole? Need to get into my list. Ah, the expedition leader. That's the guy. That's the one who knows all this stuff. Uh, let's double check. Skills. See? Appraiser and record keeper. He's rusty because he hasn't had to do it in a while. So bookkeeper, expedition leader, broker, uh, expedition leader. And then you have them do their thing. And... They'll need an office to actually do it right, but now we have a better count of what's going on. And they will get an office. I just need dwarves to actually help build the rest of this fucking fort out. I also need to probably build a few coffins. You know, let's build a few coffins here. Uh, waiting two items. All right, broker is requested at the depot. It looks like they did bring the cheese as they said they would, which is good. All right, and trade. Uh, not Our stuff is not worth a lot, but it's something. These meals are worth quite a bit. Uh, oh, wow. It brought us some musical instruments, which is fantastic. It brought us some aminals, which is okay. I'll buy that. Oh, 69. Nice. Uh, let's see. What what have they got? Plump helmet spawns. Need them. An extra anvil or two. Or three. I'll buy them. There. No more trade needed. Go home. If you want the fortress to have good trade or be able to carry a lot of stuff away, what you do is you're like, bring me lots of wood. And when they do that, they have a lot of, uh, a lot of carry capacity. You can be like, bring me lots of metal bars and they'll have a lot of carrying capacity. Bring me lots of stones. And they have a lot of carrying capacity, which is quite nice. Uh, let's see. What do I need? Training weapons? No. Uh, digging implements? Yes. Bring me picks. And bring me, bring me booze. And bring me not so much cheese. I couldn't afford it this time. I'm, I'm kind of bad at that. See, everything's expensive now. Because go fuck myself for asking for things. But if you trade well, uh, your wealth will become a known factor and they'll go, wow, this guy's really great. And then more migrants will show up and you have a bigger workforce. So I'm going to have tombs at the end of the hallway and we'll put bodies in here. One bauxite coffin. I believe bauxite is where you get, I believe bauxite is a relatively soft clay, which you can get aluminum from. Uh, through through anodes, it's it's not an easy process. So, not not exactly, not exactly a worthy material for a coffin, but good enough. I mean, it's better than like a coffee can or a Pringles chip can, you know. Oh yeah, all right. So then, what we do is we go tomb and we go. Eh, not the whole room. No, just. 
just that. Except, and we'll put the mangled guy in there and he can live there in his little tomb. And he won't become a ghost that haunts the fortress, which can happen. Now, Operation Drunk Moat will begin, which is quite useful. I hate that sound now. Oh, great. He's become possessed. It's not a good, good thing. It says he was taken by a mood. Yeah, not usually a good one. See, so if you just make a nice little tavern, you can then have it be your first line of defense. This little nice booth will be full of angry drunks. And this little stockpile here, go into food, and I go, uh, drinks, yes. Yes. Good enough. Oh, and finished furniture. Let's see. Mug? No. Cup? No. Gob? Mm. Where is it? Actually, this is just... Wrong thing. I'm an idiot. Alright, let's see. Goblets. Yes. Simple. This is where we can put booze and goblets, and then I'll just make this little tavern. And uh, guess what? That'll bring in adventures. Who, next time we have a problem, uh, can handle the security issues. In fact, I won't even need a drawbridge. Yeah. I'll just remove that need altogether. Hold on, cancel construction, cancel construction, and I will just have a, uh, yeah. I will just have a, uh, simple and happy fortress where the intro to it is filled with assholes who have a drinking and violence problem. I'll just have a few booths and a lot of alcohol. And then people will come in and be like, Oh man, your fortress is great. And I'm like, uh-huh. Actually, let me remove that door. Remove that door. DX. There. Actually, what? Come on. I gotta use the right thing. There. See, the caravan goes down this road. It'll be simple. Mudstone. All right, and then we rebuild that wall there. Good enough. Good enough. Then I will build my uh, outer layer of alert. Not really of defense, but I'll put a bunch of beehives up. So when someone kicks those in or the bees start going ape. Simple. See, they'll think that this is a normal fortress. And then they will realize it is a crazy fortress too late. Because I have a drunk mode. And the drunk mode is very powerful. Uh, let's see, furniture, table. 
the drunk mode is a very powerful means and methodology. Shale, 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 shale. Just two rows of seats in a booth, very simple tavern. I'll engrave the walls and everything so people will think it's fancier than it is. And then it will be too late. And look, they put his body in there. Excellent. I should probably put a few more burial uh, receptacles in there. I'm gonna load them in here like a fucking magazine because I know my uh, accident rate. No migrants again. No one wants to come to Fort Fun. Dreadthrifty, the home of ominous neighbors. Alright, let's... Actually, what am I doing? Why, why did I do that? Fuck. Stockpile. 11, actually... There we go. I will make this a properly okay fortress. What I meant to do was paint this as a meeting area here. And I hit accept and then I go, oh no, this is a tavern. The Garlic of Brass. What a great okay name for it. And then, uh, let's see, Tavern Keeper. I'll have a bowyer. He's a skilled comedian. So he'll be He'll be there to, you know, um, remind people that this is a okay place, right? There we go. There's the building. And sooner or later, this okay tavern will draw in um, a number of people who will become extraordinarily useful for uh, defending our crap hole here, in theory. Uh, you know, I'm wondering, Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So this is five wide, which means I can do something really cool, like I can have, ooh, yeah, let's use silver bars on the way in. So people see our silver entrance and they think we're a lot cooler than they are. Than we are really cool at all. And it's not great, but it is what it is. And then I will put in mudstone. Oh, don't have enough for that. Ooh, yeah, a copper floor on the way in. And they're like, whoa, this place is cool. It'll be really neat. silver and copper on the way in. They'll think this is a really rich fort, and then hopefully this bar will attract people. I don't think it will. Yeah, let's see. We got a tavern keeper, and... He's just in there like, Well, I have a cat in here now. Please come visit my sad room. Yeah, we're going to put out all sorts of nice stuff. I'm going to engrave the shit out of it. And people will go, what a nice place. Even though it's not. We're going to make a copper uh, road. Which is pretty ballsy, I think. I'm sure it'll corrode the shit in time, but who gives a fuck?
We have more than enough steel and other thing, or iron rather, resources and another thing, so we're getting there. This guy's just the tavern keepers down here. Oh god. What's he freaking out about? Oh, he's possessed. That's why he's not run running the tavern. Possessed by unknown forces, running around babbling, tearing his clothes off. Well, that's not good. He's lost his mind. Oh, well, you know, I mean, to each their own, I guess. Welcome to Dread Thrifty. Our tavern keeper speaks in tongues and has gone stark raving mad. There's a little bit of blood. Don't worry about it. I wouldn't. Sure, this will be fine. Sure, he'll calm down. Sure, he'll be just fine. We're gonna have a lot of bees. Hopefully. A lot of, lot of bees out here. Which I will use to make us mead. That is the purpose of them. A little bit of blood, but I, come on. I mean, it's not puke. It 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 uh, it gives flavor to our happy fortress, right? Possibly. We got plenty of copper, which is good. Gonna make some more charcoal. Smelteries will hunger soon enough. Most of the dwarves are pretty uh, happy. Three are meh, and one is meh. This guy's just, friendship is forever, he says. Hmm. Reasonable. Is this the crazy guy? Yep, running around babbling. He's just having a moment. Where's he going? He's like, I'm thirsty. It's late autumn, so the trees are shedding leaves. He's just running around crazy outside. So he wants to come back inside. And ran into the tavern he's supposed to be running. Ran past the bees. Yeah, hopefully we should have more than enough bees and then make a lot of honey and then... That'll be a pretty sweet business. A little bit more blood. That's okay. Again, it's normal. Just for blood to show up. One time I was in a cursed biome and it was so fucked up that uh, it was raining pus and blood. And forming pools of it. And the dwarves were losing their minds, as you do when you have these existential horrors. And um, they weren't having a good day. They were like, this is a bit much. You know, they, they were just like, you know what, fam? I've had enough. And they decided to retire from reality. Many of them lost their minds. Those who remained in that fortress uh, pretty much had a bad day. Things went from shit to shit show. People punched their own tickets, you know, ran around crazy, fought each other. It was not a good time. But it was Door Fortress. Oh, there goes the crazy guy again. Where's he going now? Yep, uh-huh. Just run around. 
having himself a bit of the zoomies. He'll fall over dead. I'll bury him soon enough. Don't worry. It'll sort itself out. This is the door fortress style. I'm going to continue my ramps adjacent to these because that's cool. Not going to use uh, silver though. That's expensive. I will use copper, which is also expensive, but I have more of it. I'll make the roof copper as well, which I think is neat. Slowly smoothing all this stone, which should slowly make the dwarves appreciate everything a little bit more. Not a lot a bit more, but enough. Mudstone, 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 mudstone. Actually, not shale. That one's different. I'm going to try to make it all the same-ish. Mudstone, 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 mudstone. Farmers. Excellent. See, this is going to be a nice, okay place. Except for that blood and the crazy guy, but I can't really harp on the negatives here. We have this really fancy entrance, and we started a tavern, and... I mean, there's plenty of adventures to have be had here. Plenty, in theory. <laughs> All right, let's let's go ahead and start getting this going. We have plenty of coffins for when he should finally decide to settle down. One way or another, you know. We also have plenty of cabinets. So I'm going to make sure everyone has a cabinet. And that way they can put their stuff in there. Back in the day, dwarves would do really dumb stuff like get interrupted mid-meal and carry their half-eaten food into these rooms, their private rooms, and then it would become a case of mom found the food drawer because they would fill up the cabinet They would fill up the cabinet with food that was half eaten. So you would end up with these really gross moments of just rot pouring out of their rooms. As the dwarves are like, ah, yes. The food drawer. But I'm going to make sure everyone has, has cabinets for their shit, whatever shit they have. And then I will put some statues in their rooms, because we have statues. And uh, various statues of various things. And I will slowly engrave the shit out of this area. And I will make it all super duper fancy. And they will be like, ooh, ah, yes, fancy. Just random statues of stuff. Hoping the dwarves enjoy all this hard work I put in. Pretending, I mean attempting <laughs> to care. Pretending to care. Trying to do my best by him at least. Oh man, that guy's just bleeding as he runs around. He's gone utterly crazy. We got plenty of bees though, potentially. To make honey and what have you. So that's promising. There are no merchants trading right now.
All right, we're slowly getting there. The mantra of this, let's see. Statue, oh shit. Statue of a horse. Statue of a dwarf, all right. Statue of a forgotten beast. It's not so great. Oh, statue of a pig. See, some of these are fine. Imagine coming into your room and they're like, what the fuck is that? And it's like, it's a pig I saw once. It's nice. And you're like, eh, okay. And someone else is like, cool, I got a Cthulhu monster. I don't know. Which would you rather wake up seeing in the middle of the night? That's the question. Okay, I think that's the alert that the guy died from crazy-itis. Yep, he's been found... Yep, he's been found... Or, sorry, it's been noticed he's been missing for a week. Which means his corpse is somewhere. Let's see... Missing. Up, oh, found dead, dehydrated. It's fine. I have a room for him. As I promised. Seal him in there and close the casket. We'll remember him. Weirdo guy. The guy who ran around crazy. Lost his mind. That's what you get. Oh, cool. Statue of... Wow. Ridress Jack Grown. Giant Grizzly Bear and Mudstone. Interesting. Killing of the Human by the Giant Grizzly Bear. Rayond. Cool. So they have like a Grizzly Man legend and... Some guy's like, I'm gonna draw that. Someone's gonna live with that in their room. They're like, hey man, you like grizzly bears? Oh no, not really, they scare me. Check out this statue. Oh! Alright, let's see. Furniture, table, little table in there. I'll put a bauxite table, so if he slams his hands on it, it goes right through. Little chair there, a little bauxite throne, right? Let me put that down there, boop. And this will be the accountant's office. Where, where he sits in there in his sad office. Huh? All right, where is my guy? Expedition leader. There you are. You sit in there in your office. And now, look, we're starting to get accurate numbers on stuff. Give me an accurate count. There we go. Now we know what we got. So, seems like everything has kind of reached a state of seeming equilibrium. <sighs> seeming. They got plenty of magnetite and stuff, which is nice. So I'm going to tell them to get back to smelting. Because we need that ore. And then I'm going to tell these guys. Because once we have iron, we got plenty of iron. We're going to get a lot more iron. Which means I could make some iron picks and other stuff that could sell for money. There's this guy's clothes, which... Fucking weirdo. Um, 
The kitchen has plenty of food. We have plenty of drinks. I'm only going to tell them to grow one season of crops, because otherwise I'll be drowning. Yeah, I think we're getting there just fine. I mean, we're knocking trees down like crazy. Nobody wants to come trade with us. Because we're weird. I like that fortress, Dread Thrifty. They have a crazy person and an empty tavern that's filled with losers. The losers are the employees. And you're like, well, that's not nice. It's true, though, but it's not nice. All right. We're going to need to get more stuff mined here. We're going to need more mined resources, which means we need to do do do. Mm. Do do do. Mm. Let me make sure that we've actually got those connected. So, as soon as the miners come down and start doing their fucking job, we'll have something to show for it. Oh, they're just socializing. They're just having a they're having a social moment. Oh like, yeah, yo, know, anyways, that guy went crazy. That was fucking wild. Anyways. They don't care. Discipline is lacking in this fortress. Sad door fortress thing begins. Maybe this is the game telling me that this is the winter of the fort. Alrighty, let's build some apple wood beds. And hopefully, we'll just make this fortress fine. Enough to attract some people to it. By attract some people, I mean, please bring me more workers. Because the wolves outside are scary. All right. Yep. They're doing that. Now, where's their miners mining? You know what? I know how to fix this. I think. Yep, I'll just have them redo it. Simple as. See? If, if ever something gets stuck in Dwarf Fortress, don't take it personally. It happens. Just, just tell them to redo it. Uh-oh. I may have fucked this up. Actually, not really. But maybe. They won't cut through the floor. Seems like they removed their own means up and down, which is dumb, but that can happen. That's why you make a like reserve stairwell sometimes. Yusuke, you know what? I see my error. Let's keep going. You can't be afraid of being stupid in this game. Sometimes this happens. Dig a stairwell. Yeah, it seems like they don't want to. Like there is a missing element there. Uh-oh. I may have had a perilous moment. This can happen. Don't worry about it. The 
cask of Amontillado. They're trapped in a room full of food, so it's not as bad as it sounds. If all else fails, you create a side room over here, right? And you do the same on the room above them. You can find a way around this, more or less, by going, aha. Come on, guys. He's not going for it. Come on, guys. I believe in you. I'm gonna go think on this one. All right, I figured it out. I figured it out. What I had to do was I had to move the stockpile. The stockpile, they didn't want to dig through it. And then I had to have them build some stairs. And then it worked out. I was just being dumb. It happens. I just had to I just had to outthink my stupid here. And see, yeah, now they can go up and down no problem. And we have hit a little bit more aquifer, not a lot, but you know, enough to be a pain in the ass. But yeah, if you accidentally do that, just just get them to build. Just get them to build. It's not a big deal. It's not it's not a huge big deal. I've seen, I've seen people destroy fortresses over it. Be like, I give up. The stairs have claimed another. I've been one of those people. But inevitably things go cattywampus and you end up with like a hole over here for no reason. And that's okay. Just make the room a little wider. Fine enough. Not all fortresses have to be perfect. It's, it's your accident. It's okay to have happy little accidents. Bob Ross said so. He was a fucking painter, and he said that you can be dumb. He said that's okay. In fact, I think that's goddamn expected. You can you can make an oopsie doodle or five. But yeah, we've got we've got some basics going. And further up in the fort, you can't ever get lost in the catacombs and go oh, what's going on because uh -huh. then you end up with nothing to show for it which is a problem stone workers carpenters uh, let's see I want to build some more cabinets and I want to build some more statue or you know what yeah statues because I'm trying to make sure everyone has their own cool stuff we got two coffins and we filled them already that's what happens Fall behind. Go in the ground. Oh yeah. It makes you wonder, really, what what they would think. There's only 19 of you in here? That seems kind of cozy. And you're like, yeah, it's cozy. It's very cozy. Everything is fine. How are you? All right, let's knock some of this down and make sure to knock the wall back. I don't need a flooded fortress yet. Again. I've already flooded it once on purpose. Well, on accident, then I embraced the uh, the accident. I was like, no, let's, let's do this. Fuck it, we ball.
That's how you, you know, we got our uh, farms. Oh, cool, a wedding. Mazel tov. That won't last. Um, because you got to live to celebrate life, right? Oh, look, look, we got a whole bunch of migrants showing up. Excellent. Wow, we have a lot of migrants showing up. Maybe not so excellent. This is way too many. We had 19. It's it's getting to be too many. I'm a little I'm a little startled at this point. Um Oh good god. Okay. Uh the fortress's population has doubled and they started a guild. Which is good and bad. Um It's like having a union start. You you have now a single point of contact with your uh dwarves who are Yep, and they yep, the farmers guild wants a a guild hall. It's good and bad. You get a single point of contact with your dwarves, more or less, for their bitches, uh, but then they will bitch more. But you can appease them all at once, which is good. So they'll say, we want a guild, and you're like, okay, and you build a guild hall, and they never bother you again. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. But now you have a power block in the fortress, which could be bad, you know, but it also lets you stick it to the nobles, which is good, so... In short, Dwarf Fortress doesn't get easier, it just gets more complex. Which is fine. The game is already superbly complex, so... I'm not really worried. Okay, now we need to get into our labor and see what we got. We have a militia commander, which is fine. Fish cleaners? No, I think you're going to join the uh, Planners Guild. You're going to go... Fuck yourself. Uh, there, 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 there. Yep, I'm gonna have so many people who are doing food. Yeah, that'll be fine. We should have more than enough dwarves to see to most of our needs. But good God, that sudden influx of people could destroy this fortress. Because while I have a ample... Uh, supply of provisions. Uh, adding this many dwarves can bring in some hidden dangers here. Like, uh, some of these could be were persons, so they could be like a werewolf, were lizard, were zebra, whatever. And uh, not so great. But come in, and then you know, you have a full moon, and then all of a sudden, fortress is in trouble. Rock cabinets, rock statues. Let's make some more beds, uh, barrels for storage. Let's go down to the foodery level. Charcoal. Charcoal. Smelter. Looks like he's already smelting everything he's got, which is all this magnetite laying around. Oh, and tetrahedrite. But, oh, they're running out of charcoal. That's an issue. The kitchen is not going to be cooking anything too fancy. Uh, the farmers are going to be without a whole lot to do. Which is fine. It'll let me catch up on making beds and such. How long until we have a murder boner for the remainders of the fortress? Probably not long. All right, let's make uh, some more doors. That's what we're going to need. And the finished good stockpile is just chock full of shit. So that's fun. Ah, uh, boy, boy, shit. Fuck. All right. Furniture, bed. Actually, we don't need any more beds. We have plenty of fucking beds. Cease bed. All right, bin. Make bins for storage. Doors and statues. Looks like we have enough doors for now, maybe? No, we don't. We need two more. 
All right, the charcoal people are going to be making charcoal for a bit. Oh, yeah, and the carpenter is just withdrawn from society. So, you know, that's going to end in a happy fucking story. He's going to lose his fucking mind. He's going to make us a crown made out of balsa wood or something. And as soon as somebody sits on it, he loses his fucking mind. He just melts down and starts punching holes in walls. Ugh. It'd be like, my magnum opus! I'm like, it's not that important. And then I'll be wrong. It'll be the most important thing to dwarf them, and I will have missed it because I'm stupid. Seems like they don't like the complex staircase thing going down. Just because of, as you can see, this is already starting to fill it with water. The aquifer is a pain, but not impossible to overcome. Heavy aquifers require a lot of planning. This is just a light aquifer, so it can be a nuisance that fills your fort up if you don't pay attention. But it's not the end of days, okay? It's not the end of times. It will be okay. What the fuck is that? Boss? Interested after watching a performance. Okay. Just, oh, he's a criminal. Okay. He's an outcast, right? And he's, he's the equivalent fellowship, a criminal organization. And he's the boss of it. He was just visiting. He hung out in the tavern and he was like, yeah. And then he left. All right. It's not for me, but, I mean, please don't send your friends here to kill us all, and I, I will consider this all very reasonable. Uh, oh, he wants skeletons? Stacked cloth. Oh, we don't have that. Well, we have pieces of people's clothing. Uh, let's see what animals they brought in. Because this person's just gone and lost their fucking mind. Nope, they didn't bring in any animals. So that's... Perilous. Uh, this person may just lose their their cool. All right, I'm going to continue with our our uh, copper road. That's kind of neat, I think. We're going to put applewood. Yep, there we go. We got enough beds, which is good. All right, well, they're going to lose their shit for a bit unless I get a trader in here. I mean, I suppose I could spin some cloth. Possibly, but spinning up an industry is not easy. Yeah, see, boss is visiting. Agash Kisatnakis. Sounds like a mouthful. But we're going to have our copper road going in here. And this fortress is going to be pretty all right. All right. We're going to... Ooh, we got native platinum. Which is good. I can make coins out of that. And that'll that'll make people go nuts. Yeah, see all these plump helmets we're growing? We have more than enough for everybody. Alright, check this out. I, I go, oh, you wanna you want a guild hall? Alright, well this whole layer is your guild hall now. And I go new guild hall, and where was it? Uh farmers, right? There. Done. There's your guild hall. Here, I'll just have it engraved. And you guys can sit in this giant engraved room and go, I sure love potatoes. And there you go. 
solved. I mean, they don't need to know that I just did the bare minimum, but they'll probably ask for something else. I don't know yet. Yeah, we're going to have to keep going. We're finding pyrite, which is interesting. We're finding uh, rock crystals. Still hitting that aquifer. Not great that. People are getting stung by honeybees, which is good. It lets me know that we have honeybees. Enough to get stung by. Oh no. A critter stole a shale block. However will we recover? Yeah, we have more plants than we could ever use, which I'm fine with. Uh, let's say brew drink from fruit, brew drink from plant. I'm going to tell them to start the, the liquor business again. See, they're going to engrave the shit out of this hole. And that way, fun times. The one thing that's neat about Dwarf Fortress's uh, adventure mode is you can have your dwarves go dive a, a fortress that you've abandoned or someone else's so they can, through anthropology, try to guess what happened, you know, go around and read all the interesting inscriptions and the scrawlings on the walls. They can read all of your markings and your history. Try to recover some of your artifacts in this world. Get to play some Indiana Jones. It belongs in a museum. I'm slowly making my doors happier, which is nice. Oh, yep, see? They're satisfied. I satisfy them by just engraving the shit out of a room. They're happy enough. That boss is back. He's like, hey, guys. Thanks for inviting me in. I'm like, you're welcome, weirdo. I'm also going to engrave the shit out of the uh, entrance. So anyone who comes in here is just like, holy shit, what a nice place. The walls and everything are crazy. We got this copper road. Someone will steal it at some point, you know, for copper. Uh, he's like, I need, I need cloth. Don't have it, bud. That being said, based on just what we have here, I'm going to have them grow some pigtails so we can start a business. That reminds me we should have one. I'm going to remove this stockpile. I'm going to put the stockpile in the middle of the room. Workshops, uh, farming, and actually, no, not, not farming at all. Workshops, clothing. See, we already have a we already have a leather crafter there, iron bars. And then we're going to put uh, a loom. And then we're going to put clothes. And then we're going to put a dyer. Oh, he's stricken by melancholy. He wasn't allowed to finish his item. Which happens. Oh, look at these people losing their mind. They're running stuff back and forth. It's okay. Here, I'll put this here. Except, and this will be for uh, food. And then this stockpile will be for cloth. Well, actually, 
cloth and leather. See? Simple. Man, this is just filling up. The miners are busy engraving shit. Which is good. It actually makes them very happy to engrave stuff. They're like, oh my god, this is such a good time. I'm like, right, but I need, I need you guys to not be engravers for a bit. You guys to be miners. There we go. I, I need to knock some of this back and get this all done right. There we go. to seal the walls by smoothing the stone, thus preventing any further nonsense, which will happen. Got to make sure they prevent that leakage of water in here, because that'll drown everyone. All right, good. Alert. A human caravan from Monguthral. Well, fuck yeah. Let's make some money with the Humies. Alright, let's see. Move goods to and from Depot. We already have our anvils there. Because we're idiots. And we never moved them. Uh, let's see. Blocks, uh, body parts. Uh, bo 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 cut gems. There we go. Yeah, we'll move those cut gems. Be like, do you want doors? We have lots of doors. Uh, stones, mudstones, thrones. Ah, yeah. Go to our bins area and then sort by value. Eh, we don't have a real, real lot because we haven't done much with our, our uh, precious, precious metals yet. But here come the Humies. We're going to do some business with them. I'm going to see about buying uh, plants and such that we normally don't have. And then I'm going to try to make the rest of everyone as comfortable as possible. All right. As best we can. Put all of our cabinets in there. Make everyone enjoy their room. All right, there we go. There we go. We're just going to put all our statues in here. Once everyone's got their fine enough... Oh, shit. All right, once everyone's got their fine enough rooms, after I said, oh, shit, uh, that's how you know I'm not in my right mind. All right. Then everyone should have their things good enough while our one guy goes crazy. He's allowed to. I mean, he... he Lost his mind, and that happens. Uh, let's add some more bins. Put that in there. Rock doors. We have enough rock doors. Let's add some more rock cabinets here. Okay, and then we're going to do uh, broker requested depot. And then we'll see if they'll trade. See, look. All this is worth money. He's trying to sell me a gong. All right. Goat's milk. That could be interesting, I guess. Ah, uh, yeah. Pick. We'll always need more of those. Buckler's helms. Uh, flour. Cranberry seeds, yes. Whip vines, yes. I'll go ahead and buy all this cloth. Whoa, that is way too much. All right, I'll just buy some of this cloth. There we go. 
That should be good enough. No traitor requested. Be gone, thought. Alright. Does everyone have what they need, kind of? We're missing a cabinet. Alright. Let's get a cabinet in there. All right, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. Tex said to himself. All righty. And then, um... Yeah, let's build more blocks. We're just trying to build bins and barrels for storage now. Because remember, a lot of our storage is now deep in the earth. As it should be. Bedrooms multi... There, more bedrooms. More bedrooms. Done. All right, so everyone should have bedrooms now, except for the one guy with melancholy. He's, he's probably just insane. He doesn't give a fuck. He has decided to eschew the comforts of civilization. He has decided to fill pants with poop instead. All right, let's see. Weave metal cloth. Yeah, no. Weave thread into cloth. And, uh... Oh, no. Oh, yeah, that's right. I need to go into... Cloth. Mm. I don't think I've harvested these pigtails yet. At least enough of them to matter. No? No, he's already just making pigtail cloth. Alright, never mind. He's got it handled. We're getting there. All right. Have we smoothed it? Have the walls smooth? Let's go down a layer and see if that aquifer is still waiting for us. I know it is. Come on. There we go. It'll fill up soon enough. Wow. Seems like the aquifer is everywhere down here. It's all sandstone, too, which is a shame, because not worth a lot. How much I can do with it. Let's hope that there is something. Yeah, it looks like not really. This looks like a bunch of crap. That's fine. We can have a smaller up-down as we go along. I'm just going to make sure this is all smoothed away, though. Alright, uh... We're doing it. We're making the fortress work, kind of. Happy times. Not really, but close enough. No more gems, really. Which sucks. I need to feed these people. I need to feed their industries. Their spirit. Their prosperity. Also, we need to get into, uh... Let's see. Other objects. Uh, let's get into platinum, which we have some. And let's make, uh, let's see. Mint platinum coins. And then, let's see, other objects. 
Let's get into, uh, let's see, um, uh, copper, which I know we have. And we'll do uh, copper goblets. And then we'll get into metal other objects. And I think we have just shitloads of iron. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to make, uh, let's see, iron. We're going to make iron toys for strong girls and boys. That sounds like something for a toy drive. I wish to make cast iron toys. Children have it too easy these days. Nothing like your kid throwing their back out, playing with toys. All right. Let me get some coffee in me here. Ah, good times. The one thing that crosses my mind at this moment, at this very moment, is, you know that necromancer visited with a few pals. I whipped a bunch of locals into shape. Not really. I just told them to go attack them as a flash mob, and nothing happened. Never came back. I guess that's the moral of the lesson, you know? Stand up to a bully. But, oh, more migrants. This could grow into a problem, maybe. I have legendary miners, which are working to get us more living area, but... This could be a problem. The bottom of this is filling up with water. Where are my miners? Oh, they're listening to poetry in the bar. They're like, isn't this wonderful? Like motherfuckers get to work. All right, I need to add a new work detail. And uh, let's see, it's going to be stone working. Yes, yes, they're going to be doing some of that. Let's see, uh, none of the metal smithing stuff. Hauling, stone hauling, yes, other jobs. Let's see, uh, this, yeah, sure, and road building, sure. Um, let's see. Seems like mining is not on this list of things, which is strange. You know, that doesn't that doesn't strike strike me as right, but okay. You're no longer a stone cutter. I'm going to take you off of engraving for the time being. Uh and I need more people to just fucking mine. Let's see stone cutters. Get out of here. need the miners to mine. You know what? I will also let them engrave. Because that's cool. And you know what? Where's where's my stupid fish cleaner? No. You're gonna be a miner now. No more no more of this fish cleaning. We don't do fish here. We do mining. You can mine fish. Go use the pick. Get it done. Too many cheese makers and stuff. Fishery worker? No, I don't think so. I think you're a miner. You just didn't know it yet. Oh, ranger? You can range some rocks. Yeah. Peasant? Oh, boy. You better believe you're a miner. Bookbinder? No. Mine some words. Trapper? Trap some rocks. Simple. I will make you picks. Don't think I won't. Yeah, see, we made some... You know what? Where's my... Uh... Let's see. Iron? Uh-huh. Iron pick. That goes to the top. We're gonna make some iron picks. More miners.
copper goblets. We we did make some fucking coins, which is cool. You know what? No more iron toys. We're just going to make iron picks for a while. Iron toy boat. I bet that'll be fun. I mean, if you made it right, it would be a displacement exercise, you know, but... You just go like, oh, hello class, do you think that this will sink or swim? It's made out of metal, and the class goes, oh, it's metal, it won't, it won't float. And you're like, wrong, it displaces water. You're dumb. Oh, Carpenter's been found dead, dehydrated. Uh, yeah, that was the guy who went wackadoodle, so... That's fine with me. Limited uh, lifespan, that guy. The game is like, there's water below you. I'm like, there's water everywhere. We're made out of water. Come on, get in there. Start mining. No coward. Bauxite. Nah. Before they figured out how to make aluminum out of uh, trace amounts of it found in clay and make it very cheap in the process, giving a head of state a set of silverware made out of native aluminum was considered like more princely than gold or silver. People would be like, wow, you have an aluminum, you know, flatware set. That was, that was a big thing. For a long time. You'd find you can still find them in museums. They'll say, oh, here's an aluminum flatware set from like the 1700s. And a lot of people are like, oh, that's not a that's not impressive. Where's the gold? And it's like back then you couldn't get it easy. Native, native aluminum was hard to get. Alright, here we go. We're going to knock holes in the ground here, and we're going to like it. Come on. All right. Looks like this one is as well. An aquifer layer. That's fine. We're smoothing as we go. Sooner or later, we'll just go through a layer, and there will be no aquifer. This is a troubling one, because it is uh, fairly expansive. That's okay. Just means there's more for us to do. Keeps our dwarves happy and engaged and deep in the earth where they belong. Actually, wait, I think I need to go to the farmer's... I think it is a farmer's... It's not the kitchen. I think it is a farmer's workshop has to do the processing first. I think I'm missing that step. I know someone probably in the comments is already saying, Tax, the way to do... I understand, I understand. I can open the wiki in another window and have it do the work for me, but... It's about learning those steps, you know, re relearning them in my in my brain meets and figuring out, okay, this, then that, then this, then that, then this, then that. Learning the uh, industrial processes as it is. We're going to make a shitload of iron picks. Yeah. Iron picks, platinum coins, cop copper goblets. I tell these fuckers to keep making charcoal. We're slowly engraving all this out here so people will be like, oh my god, it's so nice. Even though it's just okay. I mean, copper is not the finest for dwarves, obviously, but it's good enough. It's it's not the it's not the be all end all, but it's good enough. Probably gonna have to create yet another dwarven apartment complex over here, which is okay. It's alright. It's 
not the best. It's not the worst. But we'll get there. Unless there's a giant siege that kills everyone. Then that'll be the end of it. Till next time, that is. You know, so we'll see. Oh, man. Alright, let's see. Process plants. Yeah, see? Process plants, spin thread, and... Oh, God. Speaking of... The dead walk. There's the necromancer. Godan Rorkmuka. All right. How many are you going to bring? Oh, see, they brought back their little leopard man person. Yep. Brought back their cheesemaker as well. Oh, yeah, well. The cobalt magicians are going to be your enemy. And some very strong dwarves that have been doing not much to prepare for this are going to come out here and fight you in waves. How's that? Assign kill order. Kill the necromancer. That's all we gotta do is kill the necromancer. It's a siege. Alright, the dwarves are engaged. Seems like it's not going great for us. We did literally no preparation for this and the, the mode of drunks technique has not worked. Alright. See, it seems like uh, we lost quite a few and that's okay. We'll just uh, assign the rest out of what we got and we will send in wave two. Some people will say this is the most amateurish way of doing things, but I don't think so. The most amateurish way would be to quit. Uh, let's see. Um, citizens, others. Did I get the necromancer? Okay, there's a bunch of dead people, obviously, but if I chase the necromancer off, I'm happy. I feel like I did something right, at least. Fuck you, necromancer. Get off my lawn. Confirm. The dead what? Wow. Yeah, they're just tearing my dwarves apart. You're not doing so well. That is a lot of... That is a lot of dead dwarves. And the problem is that, yeah, cannot breathe, vision lost. They're, they're pretty much fine. The, uh, the zombies are pretty good. I think this is the end of the fortress. Wow, there's just pieces of people's teeth and stuff. Seems like some of the zombies were disabled. Um... That's something. I think the necromancer has run off. But we are down to not a lot of dwarves. That's fine. We have plenty. Back to squads. They may have skills beyond the century. Actually, wait. That, why, why would I do this? We will fight them. Well, it looks like they're coming in uninterrupted. We're down to 25 dwarves. However, they are wounded. Yeah, 101 year old. Wow. Inala Princeters, the Sable Bone Gaze. No health problems. We've managed to stop some of them, but not enough. We're down to 25 dwarves. It's alright. We will make our stand. I thought the mode of adventures would work. Okay, the dwarves are surrounding him. There's pieces of dwarves coming out. Teeth. 
They managed to hold him still for a minute. They're fighting him. They are fighting. All right, it won. It is, it is having some problems. It can't seem to grasp or fight, but they also have another, oh boy. Yeah, they have one that's a mace dwarf that's just going around fucking people up. Okay, time to send in our last dwarves. Including the expedition leader. This is rough. Alright, boys. They're fighting it. Oh yeah, they are not fighting it. There's somebody just sleeping in the room. Here it comes down the stairs to kill everyone. Just going up and down the stairs and picking fights. There's some puke. Beat that person to death. Beat one of the dwarven children to death. They killed the cat. Oh. Someone else assumed leadership, it lets me know. Yeah, this thing is just running around killing people while some people are having a nap. Well, you know, I couldn't be bothered, really. Well, we're back down to seven dwarves, many of whom are dead and dying. This once majestic fortress has been overcome with zombies. But hey, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys later. Let's all go to Cargonia, land of stolen things. Obey the quartermaster. Unless he is a link Doggo to Cargonia Land the skull and things Obey the quartermaster Unless he is a link Come this car the station Find more shit to take But the boss ain't never satisfied Until the station breaks Break miners journey onward With pickaxe firm in hand Check the cells and not to die But they burn in the balance He praises to Cargonia He praises old high priest This is a place of refuge He's so sick he last release
man off the checkers, a man above. He stretches a hand, welcoming in a cigar-wielding seasoned grin. Give me your tired, your weak, your poor, your stupid mind, and your clowns galore. The door is open, revealing the garden, eating before you, golden hardened engineer and scientist, vanguards, botanists, and displaced bars. Take a step in, bask in the glory, cargo text treat you in a hurry. Fat and clothed, you smile wide, just as a bomb detonates inside.